at you, bro. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is where things get really spicy, guys. Next up is the episode Buff for Puff. Now, not a lot of fans like this episode, and there's fair reasons as to why. It takes like five minutes to finally get into the actual plot of the episode, and the plot's like pretty boring itself. There's also not many jokes in this episode, and just the ending is also like kind of lame. But anyways, we're here for mistakes, and this episode has really bad mistakes in it. Here's the first one. Oh boy, this murder's dead. This baby shell. Boyo. I gotta get in shape before my next date. This was a mistake. So in this scene right here where Mr. Krabs and SpongeBob come to the gym so Mr. Krabs can get nice and swole for Mrs. Puff, we can see that Larry is like laying down and lifting up a weight. And if we zoom in on him right here, we slow things down and we loop it, we can see that our dude was drawn with no head. Like he has no head. Take a look at this. There's just no head drawn for Larry. As the scene progresses though, we can see that Larry's head is like laying off of the bench. But I mean, look at this shot again. You would still be able to see like his neck or his head hanging off of it. So this was like a major mistake. They literally drew Larry with no head. Like, how does that even happen? And guys, it gets worse. There's more. Here's another mistake from this episode. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. I'll give you a little hint. It has to do with Mr. Krabs' tail when he's in Larry's shell. Can't change your physique in a week. Mm -hmm. See you bros in the sauna. No one can change their physique, eh? On to at the beach. This one is also pretty rough, and it's only gonna really make sense if you understand digital art or animation to an extent. Because as you can see, Mr. Krabs, he's in Larry the Lobster's shell, which is why he looks different here. But he actually walks on his tail, which again, if you understand digital art, is a layering animation error. Mr. Krabs wouldn't be able to just step onto his tail like that. Like, if you really understand what I mean here, you know it's a mistake. And there's still more. Here's another one, and this one's really, really, really bad, guys. Hero Krabs is quite the hero! Oh, please. I'm not into muscle bound, self centered jerks. <laughs> What's that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Larry and I have a beach day tomorrow. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Larry loves. Beach dates. Beach date? So this right here is Incidental 19, okay? And you know, this character hasn't had that many appearances throughout SpongeBob, so I wasn't sure if this was a mistake at first. But take a look at this shot of Incidental 19 right here. And as you can see, this is how her feet look. All right, I know this is kind of weird to point out how her feet look, but this is how her feet look right here. Now, I needed to show you guys that, so that way it's clear that this scene in Buffer Puff is totally a mistake, as at the ending of the episode, the animator forgot to finish drawing Incidental 19's feet. Take a look right here. You can see her feet are not like that. They're not supposed to look like that. Some fish do have feet that are like lines, but they don't look like this. Plus, we have this shot where her feet look like this from previous episodes, from like older episodes predating this one, which kind of proves that in this shot from Buffer Puff, they just forgot to finish drawing her feet and just left it be. Like... <laughs> Looks like a job for... So in addition to Spongebob season 14 debuting, we also got the next season of the Patrick Star Show. So next up is the episode Superstars. Here are a couple funny clips from this episode. It's a good one. And then we're going to get right into the really bad mistake in this episode. <laughs> Drop 
the bag right now, hooligan. Not very old lady. You're safe from harm now. <gasps> Up, down, and away! This episode's actually pretty good, guys. Like, the Patrick Star Show is getting much better in season two, but it still has mistakes. Take a look at this. The citizens wanted me to stop you! I'm the good guy. <laughs> Okay, 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 pay attention, Grapple Gang. So when Squidina ties up Granny Tentacles over here, poor Granny Tentacles, if you look, her sleeves were yellow, all right, for the scene. They were yellow, as you can see here. But later on, this just randomly changes, and now her sleeves are white. First, as you can see here, they were yellow, but then why are they now white? Well, I'll tell you why. It's an animation error, a continuity error, it's, it's a mistake. And I told you guys it was bad, but it's not as bad as this next mistake in this upcoming episode. Let's head over to that one. I have an aerosol can, and I'm not afraid to use it. My eyes! Happy friend of Happy friend of Squidward! This next episode is another one from SpongeBob season 13. So it's very new. Good old modern SpongeBob. It's full of mistakes. I'm not surprised. The episode is friend adversary. And let's dive right into the first mistake. Grapple Gang, I know you guys can catch this one. So take a look. I'm going to give you guys a hint like I always do. But try to spot it before I reveal the mistake. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. Hello. Happy friend anniversary. SpongeBob? 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 Happy friend anniversary! So for this one to really hit, I need to give you guys some context, all right? So the Krusty Krab, good old fashioned Krabby Patty, all right? The home of the Krabby Patty. In terms of its design, it has this back door. It's always been there ever since early seasons. So it's not like sometimes they add the back door. It's a part of the design. I mean, just take a look at this shot from the episode, Just One Bite. From the early era of SpongeBob, as you can see, there's the back door. Well, whoever animated or wrote the episode Friendiversary forgot about this, as when Squidward arrives at the Krusty Krab in this scene, the back door is just missing. The animators just didn't draw it, which is kind of like a major mistake here in terms of like SpongeBob canon, I guess. You can't just erase the back door of the Krusty Krab from history. Oh, also, if you take a look, the chum bucket is supposed to be across the street from the Krusty Krab, as you can see in some of these shots right here. It's always been across the street from the Krusty Krab. But in that exact same scene, where is it? Because it's gone. The animators also forgot about this. So that's wild, bro. That's like two mistakes in one scene. And guys, I've got more. Here's another mistake. Remember the first time I startled you into this trash can? I go away! Go away! Classic Squiddy. Ah, memories. There's got to be a way to erase it. An eraser! Speaking of things missing in this episode, we have yet another thing that's missing, and that's the path to Patrick's house. As you can see, Patrick's beautiful rock home always has this path right here. But the animators also forgot to draw this in friend anniversary during this scene. So yeah, quite the messy episode. I mean, this episode's great. It has tons of Easter eggs, but it also has tons of mistakes. And so does this next episode we're going to be covering. Hey, this one's a lot worse, to be honest. So let's take a look at this one. Here's the party. 
there's a spot. <laughs> Whoopsie doodle. Oh, one more time. Nope. That's enough! Next up, we've got Family Plots. A very creepy episode as the plot is all about the Star family playing at a cemetery. I know Halloween just passed, but this would have been very fitting for Halloween, so it's weird that it premiered after Halloween. But anyways, take a look at some of these creepy scenes. Well, where can Patrick be hiding? <laughs> That's a great name for a spa! Oh, what a pleasant surprise! With this amount of skin slippage, this corpse must be at least two weeks old! This will be a tough job, but I will make you beautiful. Yeah, this episode's spooky, dude. I don't know about y'all, but I would never play in a cemetery. Like, that's wild. Anyways, though, mistake time. Let's go. It's time for some mistakes. Let's see if the grapple gang can catch this one. Take a look at this. <laughs> That was the best pre-soup snack I've ever had. I just wish I had somewhere comfier to digest it. I can build something comfy out of these fun blocks for kids. I can't believe this park doesn't have a playground for the children. <laughs> build it. And they will come. This one's subtle, but it's still totally a mistake. So after Squidina runs off of Cecil's back to hide, and Cecil looks back with his shirt burnt, his eyebrows are missing. Normally his design looks like this, and he has these eyebrows. And even throughout this episode, if we rewind a little bit, look, he has his eyebrows. So I don't know why in this one shot they were too lazy to draw his eyebrows. Plus, I mean, like, people don't just lose their eyebrows, guys. Like, it's a part of your body. So this was a weird mistake. Um, I'm ready. You know what? What? You convinced me. Grease Trap also thinks you're ready. Really? Mm-hmm. Hear that, Staddy? It is finally time. Here's another from SpongeBob Season 13. The episode is Spatula of the Heavens. And honestly, this episode's really good. It doesn't have that many mistakes. It has one, which we're going to get to. But before that, take a look at some of these funny scenes from this episode. Season 13 ain't so bad, right? <laughs> Anymore. You what? You better explain yourself, boy -o. I need to use my own spatula. Not just any spatula. You see, Mr. Krabs, Spatty is very special and very ancient. He was forged deep in the mountains in the far flung land of. Listen up, boy -o. You better get back in a jiffy, or I'll just have to give your job to Sponge Tom here. I'm prepared! See, I told you guys, season 13's pretty good. Go watch the episode after you're done watching this video. For now, let's expose that mistake I was talking about. Your true spatula is inside you. Become one with the patties. Every cut is sacred. Let the patties carry you! SpongeBob, that was amazing! Thanks, Mr. Krabs! This one's simple, it's an audio mistake. So, when SpongeBob repeats, let the patties carry you. Let's zoom in on SpongeBob and take a look at him, because his mouth just doesn't move. We still hear his line like we hear the audio, but if we look at SpongeBob, his mouth just doesn't move. Here, take a look again, guys, and I'm going to slow down the episode. You'll really catch it now. Let the patties carry you! See what I mean? His mouth just doesn't move to the audio, which is, again, guys, a mistake. Remember, guys, 2D animation's very hard. I'm probably going to start saying 
this at the ending of every episode. 2D animation is hard, so give SpongeBob a break, okay? It's, it's difficult. I think this episode was potentially rushed or something because there's a lot of mistakes like this in this episode that I'll probably cover in future videos, so make sure to subscribe. But for now, let's keep it moving and keep on exposing these mistakes in SpongeBob season 14. I will say really quickly, guys, I love SpongeBob and 2D animation is always gonna have mistakes. It's just crazy how often it still happens in season 14 when we're in like 2023 going into 2024. But anyways, here's another episode with more mistakes. Hey, SpongeBob, these pops are ready to play some serious patty cake. And you can't play patty cake without me. Me, me, me. Me, me, me. Next up, we have a season 14 episode that isn't hated by the community, and that's Sponge Chovy. The community actually like loves this episode, and I agree, it's a really good episode. It's like awesome to see the anchovies again, and it's also fun to see like new locations in this episode, such as the mattress store. The ending is also like really funny, where like Squidward calls a pizza shop to get rid of the anchovies. Take a look at this scene, it's so funny, and then we're gonna get into the mistakes. This episode has a lot of mistakes, and they're bad but I gotta give it its flowers first, okay? We've been dragging and just ripping on all of the other episodes, so let's show this episode some love. Take a look at this funny scene. Hey, 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 hey. I can't take it anymore! <laughs> Serve as well the pizza! I'd like an extra, extra, extra large pizza sent to the Krusty Krab as soon as possible. Hey, you wanted the pizza as soon as possible? You got it, Calamaro! Pizza delivery! snap out of that faux Toby thing. Yeah, this episode's really good. Go give it a watch after you're done watching this video. But even the good episodes with good writing still have animation errors, and this one has three. Here's the first one. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Okay, okay. Krabby Patty! Krabby Patty! Krabby Patty up! <laughs> Did you guys catch it? Because this is like a classic SpongeBob mistake. They've been making this mistake for years now, so I'm surprised it's still happening in season 14. But this right here is the Galley Grub menu. And if you're a SpongeBob fan, I don't need to tell you, but this is the Krusty Krab menu. It has all of the different items you can order on the menu. Now, it's usually right here above Squidward's workstation and right by the order window, all right? It's usually in plain sight right here. But in Sponge Chovy, when SpongeBob says, hey, someone ordered a Krabby Pie, and begins to just step on Squidward and Mr. Krabs' heads like, ouch. Um, where is the Galley Grub menu? It's just not there. It seems the animators were feeling a little lazy and decided to just not draw it in this shot. Which I mean, hey, it isn't the end of the world, but it is kind of lazy and it should be right there. It's always been there ever since the first episode of SpongeBob Look. And this isn't the only time it isn't there in this episode, which is kind of ridiculous. Take a look at this scene as the same thing happens. What? <laughs> It's about time, SpongeBob. Late Bob's more like it. When you're done snorting, I'd like to order a Krabby Patty. Okay, hold on. <laughs> One Krabby Patty, SpongeBob. <laughs> SpongeBob, stop that maybe. Are you going to back? It's SpongeBob. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, it happens again when Mr. Krabs overhears anchovies and gets excited thinking he's about to make a ton of money. See, it's supposed to be right there, but it's gone. Now, if you thought those were bad, there's one more mistake in this episode that's really rough. I mean, I'll give them a break because it happens in a scene where there's a lot of movement, but take a look at this. Let's see if you guys can spot it. This one's actually like really hard to spot. <laughs> I 
I will not be surprised if none of you guys were able to catch that one, because like I said, it's very, very hard to spot. But when SpongeBob, Patrick, Mr. Krabs, and a bunch of bikini bottomites who are like under the anchovy spell walk on this electricity pole here, if we take a look at this anchovy right here and pause right here at the right frame, this dude is missing his legs. He's quite literally just like a floating body here. The image, I'm going to rotate it so it's like to the side. And now you can really see it. He's just a floating anchovy body without legs. And if we look at Mr. Krabs over here, he's also missing legs. But to be fair, he's in the middle of his walking animation. So like that happens sometimes. Like I'm not going to make a big deal out of that. But this anchovy dude over here, homie over here, he should have legs. And they just didn't draw up his legs, which makes sense because it's a large group of people. But it still looks really bad when I pause it like this, guys. So yeah, big mistake here. <laughs> so son, uh, how's the new job going? <laughs> Just as I suspected. But fun, we have blood. Gravy is thicker than blood, Dad. Oh. Enjoy the show! The episode Movie Stars is a good episode. I have some problems with it. I'll get into that in another video. But for now, take a look at these funny scenes, as it does have some good moments. One popcorn, please, with a hint of butter. Hint, 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 hint. That's good. Hint, 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 That's enough hint, butter. Hint, 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 no more, hint, thanks. Hint, 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 hint. Ah! <laughs> I know you guys laughed at that. Come on, it's funny. But what's not funny is this massive mistake. And this one's bad, guys. You two go tear the ticket and check for people sneaking in outside food. <gasps> sir, yes, sir! This isn't a drive-in theater! You've got to set up the next reel! How do we know which one is which? SpongeBob, I say let the projector decide. Time, Time to watch, watch the movie! movie. So, after SpongeBob and Patrick tear off their Usher uniforms, if we take a look at Patrick, his shirt has no flowers on it. In every other shot of Patrick wearing this shirt, there's flowers on it. It's like a part of the design. But during this one shot where they rip the Usher uniforms off, I guess the animators forgot about this or something as they made a massive mistake by not putting the flowers on his shirt. I mean, just look at how barren his shirt looks. And again, here's like a before and after. This is how it normally looks. And this is how it looks when they tear off the Usher uniform which is incorrect. No, 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 no. And guys, I've got more mistakes. Let's head over to another episode. It. Hoops is our favorite kelp bed kid. Next up is the season 14 episode, We Heart Hoops, all about old man Walker's old persona, Hoops, who's actually a pretty cool character. Now, this episode is also fairly mid. It's better than the last one, but it has its fair share of issues. It's like a 7 out of 10 in my opinion. You guys aren't here for a review though. You guys are here for exposing mistakes. So let's expose the first one. Take a look at this. No, it's Old Man Walker again. Hoops? Why did you say so? I'm Hoops. I don't believe it. Yes, it was in the past. I think you're trying to pass one over on us. Please, what are you, a couple of dizzy ding dongs? Hey, she said Hoops' is catchphrase, you dizzy ding dongs. Hoops. Did you guys catch it? Well, this one's an example of just weird animation, and you can only really catch it if you watch it in slow motion. But when Old Man Walker asks if SpongeBob and Patrick are a couple of dizzy dong dongs, I'm gonna start using that insult. If we look at his mouth again in slow motion, his bottom tooth disappears and then reappears constantly. You can tell what's supposed to happen is that it disappears when he closes his mouth. But I mean, look at this at like 0.25 speed, and you can see the animation's very janky. It just disappears 
disappears constantly before he even closes his mouth, which is just totally like weird animation. It isn't necessarily a massive mistake, but it looks pretty bad, guys. Come on. And there's another one from this episode. Take a look at this. <laughs> It's that ruffian Ajax McGee! Let's get back at Ajax! Like, in one of your episodes! Uh, episodes? Yeah, at my age I have a lot of episodes. Who wants pudding? I do! Hold that pudding! We can build our own tank! <laughs> This one is very quick and it's very rough, but during this scene where Patrick and SpongeBob ride these tires, well, let's take a look at our favorite starfish over here as Patrick has no pupils in his eyes. I think it's supposed to be that his pupils are like looking to the left at SpongeBob, but it was very poorly drawn to the point where it literally looks like his eyes just have no pupils at all. Like, look at this, I'm zooming in, I'm making it slow motion, I'm looping it, and it's pretty rough, guys. Like, come on. Like I said though, the mistakes are gonna get worse as this video progresses. We're starting out light let's head over to another episode with some really, really rough mess ups. It's like, how did you guys even make these mess ups? Let's keep it moving. First up is the episode Sponge Chovy. Like I said, this is a season 14 episode, so it only came out like this month. And believe it or not, your boy Cartoon Cory has already found a mistake. There's only one, but here, take a look at this. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Ah, and now it's Squiddy time. The octopus will sizzle. Ah, yeah. Mr. Krabs are bochovies. Did you guys catch it? Well, listen closely, all right? It's kind of complicated. So when Squidward locks the Krusty Krab door and leaves the key in the door, as you can see right here, remember, the key is left in the door. Well, in some scenes, if you look, the key in the door is just missing. It's not there anymore. I mean, Squidward literally leaves the key in there. It's like a main plot point. So it's not a big deal, but totally a mistake. Hey, mistakes happen, and guys, we've got more coming up. Let's keep it moving. Do you watch my baby while I run? Under the restroom. The baby wants it. The baby wants it. The baby First up is the episode Bass Word, an episode all about Squidward and Bubble Bass. It's so cool seeing Bubble Bass again. I love how much he's been appearing in like recent seasons, but it's all about them coming together and needing to tolerate each other. Now, this episode's pretty mid, but it's also pretty good in terms of modern SpongeBob standards. Of course, though, the episode has a mistake and it's a spicy one. I'm gonna play the footage. Let's see if you guys can spot it, all right? Take a look at this. Get some city, here I come. This is going to be the best weekend ever. Huh? Squidward, Bubble Bass. Get some silly! Just stay away from me. Deep to the O. Oh, you! You're taking up two seats. One for each cheek. Did you guys catch it? Well, let's take a look at this shot of Bubble Bass right here. This is an old shot of him, and as you can see, this is his design, and he always has this fin right here. It's right behind his head, and it's been there ever since his first appearance back in the episode Pickles. What an iconic episode. Look, it's right there. Well, in this episode, Bass Word, this new episode from season 14, when Bubble Bass is seen for the first time in the episode, the animators just didn't draw his fin. It's missing, it's gone, which is totally a mistake. I mean, later on in the episode, he does get his fin. But come on, in this one shot, you guys couldn't have drawn it? I'll give him a break. It's 2D animation, which is hard, but Bubble Bass should have had his fin. It's a part of his iconic design. Now, this one was light in terms of mistakes, but let's head over to another episode from season 14 with even worse mistakes than this. It's gonna get pretty rough today, guys, so stay tuned. I'm gonna miss you, Krabby Patty. <sighs> 
What's this <laughs> happening to me? Isn't it obvious? You're allergic to Krabby Patties! Our first episode for today is Allergy Attack from Season 13. We've covered this episode in the past, but I've got new mistakes that I found recently. Here's the first one, and let's see if the Grapple Gang can catch it without my help. All right, I'll give you guys a little bit of a hint, but let's see if you guys can catch it. Mr. Squarepants, how do you feel? Oh, I can't believe it's really happening! This is the biggest day of my fry cook career! I'm sure the patty will be mediocre, but I must be first at everything! Get me that! Get alive, people! It's just a patty! If I'm making the kazillionth patty, then you've written a gazillion orders! <sighs> Don't remind me. Come on, Grapple Gang. I know you guys caught that one because it's an audio error, so it was right in your guys' ears. But for those who didn't, there's actually an audio cut, like an audio mistake between Squidward's lines. The lines in particular are get a life people, and it's just a patty. Here, take a look at the clip again and you'll hear it. The audio just like messes up and cuts. Get a life people, it's just a patty. Hey, it's not that big of a deal, but this next mistake is way, way worse. Take a look at this one. <laughs> Come on! Don't miss my expert fry cook, SpongeBob! Cooking his one gazillion Krabby Patty! Perch Perkins here, live at the Krusty Krab, bringing you the play by play on this momentous day! So, this character right here is Incidental 40, okay? He's appeared in many, many episodes, even back in like season four, season three. And as you can see, he has these eyebrows right here. It's a major part of his design. Well, in Allergy Attack, Incidental 40 appears without any eyebrows for some strange reason during this scene where Perch Perkins enters the Krusty Krab. Here's like a before and after. Here's how he normally looks with the eyebrows. And then this is how he looks in this one scene in this episode, which is a very, very weird mistake. And that's not it, guys. I've got even weirder mistakes coming up. These ones were kind of light, but the next episode we'll be talking about has a bad one. All right, time for a field test in T minus three, two, one. Huh? <laughs> My up next is the first episode of SpongeBob season 14. Believe it or not, there's like four or five episodes already out. It's crazy, man. I remember being like seven years old back in the day watching pizza delivery from like season two or three. So there being 14 seasons now is crazy. But the episode is single cell the defense and this one has two mistakes in it. Here's the first one. Knock, knock. How did you get past me security ninjas? With the art of karate. Now that I can defend myself, your feet are all doomed! Bad news for you, Plankton. I don't have any feet. Just my luck, I guess. <laughs> Six to eight weeks before I can attack the Krusty Krab again. Oh boy! Only six to eight weeks! before I can work at the Krusty Krab again. Come on, Grapple Gang. I know you guys were able to catch that one as it's pretty straightforward. In one scene, as you guys just saw, our boy SpongeBob over here, his mouth just disappears for like a few seconds. Of course, it does come back, but as you guys can see here, I'm zooming in, his mouth is gone. SpongeBob, you love Krabby Patties, bro, so you might want to get your mouth back. You kind of need that to eat Krabby Patties, so yeah. Here's another mistake, though. Same episode. I'm off to go shopping. Oh. Ew, what is that? Pleasure doing business with you. Likewise, my shady friend. So, same time next. I'm here for the formula. Hand it over and nobody gets. I seem to have stepped in some revolting substance. Now this one's somewhat of a like common mistake in SpongeBob, especially if you watch Grapple often, you guys already know it's coming. But in this scene where Plankton opens the Krusty Krab doors, let's take a look behind him. As both the Chum Bucket and the road leading to the Chum Bucket are missing randomly. It is SpongeBob canon that the Krusty Krab and the Chum Bucket are directly across from each other. But in this episode, a season 14 episode as well, which is surprising, the Chum Bucket and the Path are just gone, and they're not across from the Krusty Krab, which is totally, totally a mistake. Hey, Nickelodeon, I love ya, so I'll forgive ya. And let's head over to another episode, guys, with a spicy mistake. <laughs> uh, we're not supposed to touch that stuff. 
We're not supposed to touch that either. <laughs> Good people have no use for weapons such as... <laughs> the only thing I'm good at is being evil. What's that smell, SpongeBob? That, Patrick, is the smell of defeat. Good. I thought it was my skin. Oh boy, Grapple Gang, if you guys know me, Cartoon Cory, if you know me well, you're a longtime supporter of the Grapple Gang and Grapple. You know that I love old school SpongeBob. Like, I like modern SpongeBob. Season 13 was pretty good, and season 14's pretty good as well. But I love the OG era, the Steven Hillenburg era. So let's talk about an episode from back then Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 3. I love this one. Here's some funny clips. And then we'll get into the mistakes. This one has some bad mistakes, but let's go back and be nostalgic and take a look at these funny clips. The evil Man Ray is the all-time greatest arch nemesis of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. I have so many questions to ask him. <laughs> I, the evil Man Ray, command you to release me from this frozen prison at once. Well, uh, Mr. Evil Man Ray, sir, we can't do that. Why not? Because you're evil! You mean, if I was good, then you'd let me go? Yeah, sure, why not? Then, uh, in that case, I am good. Well, that's good enough for me. Fools, prepare to be eradicated! <laughs> What's wrong with me? What is this? <laughs> Infernal contraption? Don't play dumb, Man Ray. You know that's the Tickle Bell Mermaid Man used on you in episode number 17. As seen in episode 17. Dude, now I want to go back and just watch the episode. But guys, we got to expose these mistakes is what we're here for. Here's the first one and let's expose it together. Try and spot it without my help. I'm going to give you a hint, but try and spot it before I reveal it. <laughs> All right, people. Everybody stand right where you are. Oh! I want you to... Uh... <laughs> no, no, stop giggling. Give me all of your... Uh... <laughs> give, give me, give me all of your... <laughs> give, give me! <laughs> the belt is gone, but I still feel its tickle. The urge to do bad is gone! <sighs> I guess I'll just open a checking account. So, this right here is Incidental 7, and as you guys just seen, Man Ray tries to rob a bank by confronting Incidental 7, and at first, she has this beautiful lipstick on in this shot right here. Remember this. She's looking glamorous, but in a shot later, what happened? Where'd her lipstick go? I highly doubt she just took it off mid-conversation. What actually happened is at first, the animators drew her with lipstick, but then in future scenes, they just completely forgot about it, which is a major continuity mistake. I mean, it isn't major, but it's still a mistake. I mean, come on, guys, look at that. You can't just randomly not have lipstick on in a matter of seconds. Anyways, though, here's another mistake from this episode. It's pretty spicy. Excuse me, sir, but I do believe you've dropped your wallet. It doesn't look familiar to me. What? I just saw you drop it. Here. No, it's not mine. This is your ID. Yep. I found this ID in this wallet, and if that's the case, this must be... Your wallet. That makes sense to me. Then take it. It's not my wallet. Oh, you gimbal! Take back your wallet and I'll rip your arms off! Uh, wrong. Goodness lesson number two. You see someone struggling with a heavy package. What do you do? Hello, friend. I noticed you were struggling with that package. Would you like some help? With Ow! You butterfinger pink thing butts in that box anyhow! My wallet. Ah! Oh, SpongeBob, tickle him! <laughs> so, throughout this episode, there is this box right here, all right? Especially in this scene when Man Ray is about to slam Patrick into the ground. Just before this, we can see the box right here. But after this, there's quite the continuity error, as when Man Ray is actually going to slam Patrick, where did the box go? It just disappears. First, it was here, and now it's just gone. Where did it go? It's just poof, it's gone. Mistakes like this are just funny, because it's like, how do you draw something and then just forget to draw it again in the same episode? I mean, 2D animation, guys, is very hard. 
but it's still really funny. Not as funny as this next one though, guys. Let's take a look at this next one. I'm gonna need to get new pants. No, nope, ew, not these. These pants hug my body better than my own mother. You will not believe the mistakes in this episode, and they all have to do with SpongeBob's eyes. Not just SpongeBob, even Mr. Krabs is really funny. The episode is to square pants or not to square pants. Here's the first mistake. to finish the day's chores. Did you catch it? Like I said, it has to do with SpongeBob's eyes. As when SpongeBob walks away from the dryer, um, his eyes are yellow for a frame. It's just as he's going off screen and it's bad. Like, look at that. Both of his eyes are fully yellow when they're supposed to be white. And like I said, that's not it for mistakes with eyes. Here's another mistake. I am not SpongeBob SquarePants, Mr. Krabs. Do these pants look square to you? They're round. Yeah, so? Did you catch that one? Because it's way more obvious, as when SpongeBob is talking to Mr. Krabs and says they're round, um, his eyes turn green for a split second. That looks gross. SpongeBob, that does not look healthy, dude. Like, yellow is one thing, but green, lime green like that? I'm concerned for our favorite little sponge. Who knows? Maybe he has the suds again. And that's still not it, guys. Here's one more mistake that has to do with eyes. To doing? I'm used to Squidward sleeping on the job, but I expect more from you, Mr. Squarepants. Man, what is going on with the eyes in this episode? The animators must be playing a joke on us. When Mr. Crab says, I'm used to Squidward sleeping on the job, but I expect more from you, Mr. Squarepants. Look between his eyes. It should be the background of his office. Like we should even be able to see yellow because of the yellow flag behind him. But there's white spacing in between both of his eyes. Like this was just a really weird animation mistake. Like I don't even know how this happened, but hey, it's a mistake and you guys can see it right here. But let's keep it moving and head over to another episode, guys. The mistakes are endless today. Bring that patty here now. Okay, Squidward, here I come. I'm coming over. I'm bringing the patty to you. Right now. Ah. Uh. SpongeBob. So that last episode was from SpongeBob season 13, the most recent season of SpongeBob. So let's go back in time to old SpongeBob, the Steven Hillenburg era, and talk about some mistakes in the episode, Your Shoes Untied. I love this episode. It's a good one. Any classic SpongeBob I love. Anyways, though, here's the first mistake. Roll the footage. This is the worst service we've ever had. We're going to the chum bucket. Wait, don't go. <laughs> Oh yeah, we are definitely out of here. Yes! Wait! Wait! Let's go! What's the meaning of this, Mr. Squidward? It's SpongeBob's fault. This one is really, really funny. So guys, when the customers start to leave the Krusty Krab in this scene, this character right here, known as Incidental 67, wears a pair of pants that are similar to SpongeBob's, okay? You can see them right here. They're kind of fresh. Look at this guy, Jack in SpongeBob style, stealing his drip. Here's the problem though, guys. When the customers leave, this Incidental's pants just disappear. Where are they? At first, he's wearing in these pants right here, but then in this scene, they're just gone. And again, just like Incidental F9, I highly doubt he took off his pants in the middle of the crusty crab. The burgers ain't that good, guys. But anyways, let's keep it moving and head over to another mistake in this episode. This one's pretty bad. I'm sorry, Squidward. Get another. What's the hold up? I think my heart just stopped. Now, any hardcore SpongeBob fan like myself knows that this character right here is Old Man Walker. And I mean, it's in his name. He's old. He's an old man. I love the guy, but he's a senior citizen. But I guess whoever made this episode kind of forgot about this. Because when Old Man Walker says what's the hold up to Squidward, he talks in a young man's voice. Here's a clip right here showing his old voice again from another episode. Pardon me, young lady. 
What a fox. <laughs> I hope I don't miss again. He's old, right, as you just heard. Well, listen to his voice again in this episode. What's the holdup? Dude is like a young man again somehow. I don't know how this happened, but this was definitely a mistake, guys. This one's kind of bad, but hey, that's not it for today's video. Let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. Let's go. It's time to clean up your act, Gary. Oh. <laughs> I bathed Gary too hard and removed his skin. Man, there's nothing like season two of SpongeBob. It really takes me back to my younger years, especially the episode Gary Takes a Bath, an episode all about Gary, well, as you can imagine, refusing to take a bath. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about this quick mistake that happens in the episode. Roll the footage. Look what I found. It's an old pirate treasure map revealing the location of buried pirate treasure in this very house. Come on, boy, let's go get that treasure. Now you need to be a true SpongeBob fan to really catch this one or even understand it. So take a look at these random shots of SpongeBob's living room and take a look at the wallpaper. It's like this blue design with like bamboo sticks in it. And it's always looked like this ever since season one. Well, in Gary Takes a Bath, we get this scene where SpongeBob is in the kitchen holding up his treasure map, okay? And as we can see, the background is incorrect. We can see the wallpaper of his living room, right? But but as I already said, SpongeBob is in the kitchen. It should actually look like this. The wallpaper is not blue. We know this for sure because the door in the kitchen is in the right place. This means for sure that it's not a shot of the living room. So the wallpaper should not be blue. This was like a weird mistake. I don't know how it happened. It's kind of funny, but let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. Maybe this museum is too low brow for this masterpiece. And take your putrid painting with you. Won't anyone save my precious painting? First up is the episode Insecurity Guards, which is actually like a really good episode in terms of modern SpongeBob. You'll actually notice today, guys, a lot of the episodes are from modern SpongeBob, so seasons like 9, 10, 11, 12, etc. Anyways, though, here's our first mistake today from Insecurity Guards. Take a look at this. No! Rule number one of guarding is don't let visitors touch them. No touchy, no feely. Aye, aye. And the most important rule of all is don't let visitors steal stuff. If you see anybody suspicious, <laughs> you give them the old stink eye. Okay, so this little dude right here is Monty P. Moneybags, and he's actually somewhat of an iconic character as he made his first appearance all the way back in the episode Artist Unknown from season one, two, or three. I can't remember. I call it bold and bright. More like belongs in the trash. <laughs> Anyways, though, as you can see, this little dude looks like this, all right? He's like orange. This is his main color ever since Artist Unknown. Remember this as this is a big part of the mistake, as in Insecurity Guards, when Monty P. Moneybags is seen from afar, as you can see, he has his correct orange color. But this is where things get tricky. When SpongeBob and Patrick pass by him up close, like what is going on with this dude? What? What? He's mistakenly colored as like a light turquoise, and this is just incorrect. Normally, he looks like like this, this orange color, but here the animators just made a massive blunder and colored him completely incorrectly, dude. Like, what? That ain't even it for this episode, too, guys. Wait until you see this mistake. Let's see if you can spot it. Oh boy! An extinct woolly mollusk! Oh, this little guy looks like my Gary. Is that it? Why won't you worst? Huh? Okay, so throughout the episode, for the most part, SpongeBob and Patrick wear these fresh security guard outfits, and my boys are dripping, bro. Like, get me one of those shirts. Look at them. They're so fresh. But anyways, they're wearing these outfits, and you need to remember this as it's important to the mistake. As later on, when Patrick and SpongeBob get spit out by this woolly mollusk, before they get spit out, they're still wearing the security guard outfits, okay? They're wearing this. They go in his mouth, but then when they're spit out, take a look at our boy Patrick over here as he's 
wearing his normal, like, outfit, he's wearing his normal pants, instead of his security guard uniform, which is like a massive continuity error. He's wearing it, but then when he's shot out of the mouth, it's like they just forgot, but whatever. There's still another mistake in this episode. Let's move over to that one. Put on those mistake glasses, and let's see if you can spot it, though. The first exhibit on our tour is... The Employee Locker! Life is so glamorous. Let me just get my key. Put that on. Okay. <laughs> Well, how do I look? Now this one is more subtle. It's not that big of a deal. Real quick though, take a look at this. This is how the inside of Patrick's mouth normally looks, all right? Remember this as it doesn't look like this during this one scene in Insecurity Guards. As when Patrick shows SpongeBob the employee locker room, take a look at Patrick's mouth. It's like outlined red for a frame. It's only one frame and it almost looks like the entire inside of his mouth is red, which is totally a mistake, guys. Like it's not that bad of a mistake, but it's totally a mistake. Now, if you want bad mistakes, stay tuned as I've got lots in this video. Let's head over to another episode. I'm so glad you all could make it. Tonight is going to be a magical evening filled with magic. Can we skip the magic and get right to the free money? How about the latte zipping? And what about the pumping of the iron? The real reason I called you here was to watch this slideshow of photos from my family vacation. I knew it was too good, good to be true. true. Want to know what would be a ton of fun? Going on a family vacation with SpongeBob's mom and dad. And that's exactly what happens in the episode, A SquarePants Family Vacation. And it's a good episode. The plot is like fire in this episode. But of course, the episode has mistakes. And and here's the first one, guys. Keep those eyes peeled. Let's see if you can spot it. Okay, find me! He can! This one is going to require us slowing down some footage, okay? Because it happens so quickly and it's very easy to miss. So, when this boat is crashing through the Bikini Bottom Outskirts Mega Mall, there are these two incidentals right here who are walking near the edge. Now, if we slow down the footage as this scene takes place and the crash happens, these two incidentals disappear way too early. You can see they're supposed to disappear a little bit later on, but if you slow it down, you can see they kind of just cut out of there way too early and they just they just cease to exist. They just go poof, and it looks very, very weird. But that's not it for weird occurrences in this episode. This next mistake is even weirder, dude. Look at this. You brought homework? No, Patrick. It's a brochure detailing all the fun to be had at our final destination, the Great Barrier Reef. I can't wait to get there. How about you? No, I can't. Yeah. No, I mean, I really can't. I've been in this confined space too long already. Help! All right, boys. All right. Let's turn down the volume back there. Why don't we play a road game to pass the time? Yeah! Anybody know any? Oh, 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 oh. Why does he get to go first? This one is admittedly more subtle, but it's still like a mistake. So Patrick's seatbelt, as you can see here, it's on while he's viewing the map. They're in the car and he has his seatbelt on, you know, that's that's good. Kids, if you're ever in the car, make sure to wear your seatbelts, just like Patrick is right here. But when Margaret Squarepants, SpongeBob's mom, suggests playing a road game to pass the time, um, Patrick's seatbelt just disappears. I don't think the dude took his seatbelt off, but I think happened here is the animators originally drew him with the seatbelt, but then we're feeling a little lazy for this scene because, you know, Patrick has to move around and just didn't draw the seatbelt again, making for a continuity error, a pretty bad one. And that's not it. We've got more mistakes in today's video, guys. Stay tuned. This next one is nutty. Hello, Mrs. Puff. Are we feeling any better? I see you got the flowers I sent. Yes, I'm allergic to them and you. Let's head over to season eight for this next one. I'm talking about the episode Demolition Doofus. Here are some hilarious clips from this episode. It's a funny one. Okay, drivers, let the destruction begin. I can't look. Wait, yes, I can. Ah! Uh, what the hey? What? 
This is not going well. You know, SpongeBob isn't a very good driver, as we've seen over the years, but I guess that kind of helped them in this episode. But anyways, here's the first mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Here's a little hint. It has to do with this character right here, Incidental 41. So what do you say, Captain Lootfish? Will you enter him in the derby? Look out, extra credit. Here I come. <laughs> Welcome to the Bikini Bottom Demolition Derby! The Cruncher! So this admittedly is another nitpick, kind of, but it is still like a blatant mistake. But as I said, Incidental 41, right? So take a look at this scene right here and take a look at Incidental 41's lips. As you can see, they're like a pale yellow. Right here, I'm zooming in, remember the color of those lips. But then in the very next scene, literally seconds later, poof, take a look at the lips now, they're blue. I doubt Incidental 41 randomly went and put like lipstick on or something. This was just a weird mistake. First, they're like pale yellow, as you can see here, and now they're blue. Like, what? What happened? The same can be said for this next mistake right here. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. Oh dear, I think I'm in that fellow's way. Engage turn signals. Hands at 10 and 2, and finally, Florida! This one is really, really easy to miss, but take a look at this. As you can see, SpongeBob lifts up his left leg to floor it, all right? He lifts up his left leg, but then like in the next shot, his right foot is shown on the gas instead when it was his left leg that he like lifted up. Not that big of a deal, kind of a minor mistake, but it's still a mistake. And guys, I've got another one. Check out this. This is Pop, what should I? Why are you still alive? Put it in drive! Thanks, Mrs. Pop, you're the best! So take a look at this guy right here, the cruncher, all right? I don't wanna mess with this guy. I don't want no beefs with this man right here. But anyways, look at him. As you can see, he has these back fins. It's a part of his design. They're on his back. They're right here, you can see them. Well, when the cruncher drives away from SpongeBob after he drives over him and nearly ends his life, take a look at the cruncher's back as those fins are just gone. They're missing. What happened? Fish don't just randomly lose their fins. So this was another mistake. Mistake. They drew him with fins, as you can see here, but then in this scene, they were lazy and forgot about them. But hey, mistakes happen. Grandma is a real live club naughty and witch, but I don't think she likes me very much. I'm Agnes. I've got magical powers of transformation, and I don't approve of this non-magical husband. <laughs> Agnes! First up is the Patrick Star episode, which, which is which. And don't worry, guys, like I said, we're going to be talking about regular SpongeBob, but this episode has a really bad mistake. Roll the footage. I'm here to see my precious <laughs> granddaughter. You're the daughter of a seventh generation witch, you know. It's time to undergo the family witch trials to test you for magical powers. I don't think I have magical powers yet. When did you get yours, Mom? Well, I never got my powers. I may not have lived up to all of Mama's expectations. Hmm. First, we'll test your ability to cast fire spells. You need a fire wand, naturally. Wow! My own wand! Oh, thank you, Nana! Would I call you Nana? No, no. It's very easy to miss, but okay, at one point in the episode, Squidina gets her wand. And if you pay close attention, as she gets the wand, the button on her shirt turns transparent for a frame. It just becomes see-through, what? I'm sure most of you guys get the mistake, but for those who don't, normally the button on Squidina's shirt looks like this. It isn't see-through. But in this one shot of which which is which, yeah, it's just, uh, it's just see-through. It's transparent, what happened here? I will say, despite the mistake, Mistake, this is a good episode, but stay tuned, guys, as we're going to keep it moving and head over to another episode with more mistakes. Let's go. If you don't get moving, I'm going to... You're going to do what, sir? Uh, I was going to give him a snaily treat. 
Up next is a season four episode, The Scent of Money. Now this episode's actually pretty good. Take a look at some of these funny scenes. Mr. Krabs, what are you doing out here? Oh, you know, unwinding, enjoying the free parking. What's happening to your critter there? I'm not sure, but whenever he does that, he finds change. Change? As in legal tender? <laughs> Shiver me shell wax. You're like a little money detecting, uh, the way, uh, you know, what do you call it? Legal. <laughs> there you go. Bring in that change. Hey, what are you doing with my change? Your change? Anything on the floor be fair game. <laughs> Looks like I need pockets for me pockets. How's it going, boyo? You feeling the coin vibes? You look fine to me. Quit being such a baby and start making me some money. Dude, seeing Mr. Krabs dressed up like a lady like this is so funny. Like, look at this dude. But this scene's also where we can spot a mistake. Roll the footage. <laughs> How's it going, boyo? You feeling the coin vibes? <laughs> You look fine to me. Quit being such a baby and start making me some money. <laughs> oh boy, it, it sure is hard being preggers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so when Mr. Krabs is freaking out at Gary and just being like a psycho and says, now quit being such a baby and start making me some money, Mr. Krabs has problems, dude, what? Anyways, though, as Mr. Krabs says this, the spots and spiral on Gary's shell disappears, like it's just gone. It's so weird seeing Gary like this. I'm zooming in and him with just a bare pink shell is so weird. And it's not the only time it happens in this episode. It also happens during this scene. Well, I never! You never what? Learn to use decent language? Oh. Who do you think you are? Jackpot! Money, 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 come to Papa! Yeah, so take a look at this during the arcade scene. As Mr. Krabs lifts Gary up, at least the swirl's there, but the dots are gone. A little reminder for you guys, this is normally how Gary looks. He has the swirl and he has these dots right here. But when Mr. Krabs picks him up in this shot, those dots are just gone. Where'd they go? They're missing. Gee, Patrick, I didn't know you spoke bird. No, that's Italian, SpongeBob. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Next up is some more season two, guys. I love old school SpongeBob. I say this all the time. You guys know this, but just old school SpongeBob is the best. Seasons one, two, and three, four is not too bad, but this episode is wormy. I know you guys know this episode. And here is the first mistake. Take a look at this. <gasps> Shoot. Looks like a twister hit this place. Hey there, wormy. You weren't supposed to change till I got back. That ought to hold you, little guy. <laughs> Howdy, SpongeBob. Sandy caught the monster. Golly, maybe I should go out of town more often. This first mistake can be found closer to the ending of the episode. It has to do with our favorite guy, Fred, over here, Mr. My Leg. <laughs> Well, if you watch Fred over here as he's carrying Sandy and SpongeBob at the ending of the episode, our boy's eyes become like transparent. They're like see-through, they become like gray pretty much, but that's not how Fred is supposed to look, guys. That's just a weird mistake. It's only for a frame, but it's still a mistake. And there's more. Here's mistake number two. <laughs> What might have happened if we didn't tell everyone about the monster? About the what? <laughs> Ah! 
This next one is just funny. Like this is, I don't know how the writers or animators made this mistake. It's cartoon logic, so it's fine. But during this scene, we can see that SpongeBob and Patrick are running away from Wormy terrified, along with a ton of other Bikini Bottomites. And if you look closely, we can see that the city, Bikini Bottom, is like destroyed. <laughs> it's just destroyed, all right? Havoc has been ensued. Here's the thing though, if you watch the episode as it progresses, okay, when everybody reaches the traffic light while being chased, take a look at the city now because it's like perfectly fine. Before this, it was destroyed like seconds prior. Like look at this, like this place is destroyed, but now it's just perfectly fine. So this is a bit of a weird continuity error. Again, it's cartoon logic, but just, yeah, it's kind of funny. It's totally a mistake. And here's another one from this episode. Let's see if you guys can spot it. So going back to the scene where all of the Bikini Bottomites are being chased by this monster over here, this worm, this butterfly wormy, we have another mistake as we want to take a look at Incidental 7, okay? At first, her dress is yellow. You can see right here, it's a beautiful yellow dress. But this dress just randomly changes colors in the matter of seconds. It changes from yellow to gray, as you can see right here. I'm zooming in, and now her dress is just randomly gray. I mean, it's pretty, but it wasn't originally gray. It was yellow, and yeah. I've I've got one more mistake for this episode, guys, and I'm gonna make it really quick. You have no excuse for missing this one because I've done a similar one in this video. Watch. Bye, Sandy. Stop! Wait! You forgot about this pet! Oh, that's only wormy. He don't eat much. Were you guys able to catch it? If so, I'm very proud of you as take a look at the acorn badge on Sandy's suit. Just like pre-hibernation week, throughout this entire episode, it is black as opposed to this, the regular color as you can see here. Throughout all of wormy, it's this color, it's black, which, you know, that was the same thing in pre-hibernation week. So if you guys caught it, I'm really proud of you guys. But anyways, let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. <laughs> It appears to be my lunch hour. Mm, Grown-ups have to eat too. I guess this will oh, have to do. You don't want this baby food. How about a big piece of steamed coral? Oh yeah. Uh, gray. Nutritious. All right, so I know some of you guys like hate the Patrick Star Show. So to like rinse your mouth out, all right, to cleanse your palate, here's a good old fashioned SpongeBob episode. I'm talking about Grandma's Kisses. This is like such a good episode. So much so that we're gonna get into the mistakes, but here are just some funny scenes from the episode. It's so nostalgic. You know how grandmas are. They love babies. You just can't act like a baby around her. You're right, Patrick. You're a man now, SpongeBob, and it's time you started acting like one. First, puff out your chest. Now say tax exemption. Tax exemption. This is it. What are you gonna tell Grandma? I'm a grown-up. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. And then you get behind her and I'll push. Patrick, we didn't say that. I am glad you see it my way, Grandmother. Well, I'm glad that's settled. But what am I going to do with all these fresh baked cookies? Sorry, Grandmother. We adults don't partake in the consumption of sweets. Right, Pat? Trick? Keep them coming, Granny! <laughs> so much for no more baby stuff. See, I know we've got a lot of younger viewers on the channel, but if you were watching SpongeBob back when I was watching it, like in the early 2000s, this episode was a banger. It's a really good episode. But even bangers like this one have mistakes. You guys know the drill. Keep those eyes peeled and take a look at this. You don't have to be a baby to get old grandma's love. I don't. Of course not. <laughs> and remember, you can kiss your grandma and still be an adult. Here you go. Thanks, Grandma. Could you not mention this to the guys down at the Krusty Krab? No problem. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
Alright, you need the eyes of a hawk to really catch this one, and it has to do with colors. So, when Squidward and the Krusty Krab customers are seen amusingly laughing at Spongebob hugging his grandmother at the end, it's so lame. There's nothing wrong with loving your grandmother or your mother, guys. There's nothing wrong with that. But anyways, when Squidward and the gang are roasting Spongebob for it, they're just making fun of him, there's these two incidentals right here. Now, throughout the episode, and just normally in general, they're blue, alright? But for some reason, at the ending, they're green and purple. Like I said, normally they're blue, as you can see here. But then these two incidentals just randomly change colors at the end and turn to green and purple. If you actually know how incidentals work, you know this is a mistake. These aren't different fish. They're the same fish, just these types of mistakes happen sometimes. Especially with incidentals. But let's keep it going and head over to another mistake, guys. I know you guys can catch this one. Thanks, Grandma. SpongeBob, you forgot your kissy kissy. I sure did. <laughs> Bye, Grandma. Thanks for the ride. Oh, <laughs> Isn't this great? Everybody's in a good mood today. They're laughing at you, not with you. There's nothing wrong with getting kisses from your grandma. No. Especially if you're a big baby who wears diapers. <laughs> <laughs> This one is very similar to the last one. So in the first shot, Clayton over here is azure, all right? You can see he's this color, look at him, all right? Look at him, remember this. Then in the second shot, he's now violet. He's just changed colors entirely. But then it gets even worse as in the following shot, our boy changes colors again and is now this color. So just, yeah, another messy one, dude. Like the color changing mistakes aren't that big of a deal, but they are. Like a character doesn't just change colors, guys. That doesn't happen. Hey, SpongeBob. How's it going? Oh, how are you, Sandy? Hey, listen, I was wondering if you could come by tonight. Sure, what's up? I whipped up a new invention that I'm gonna unveil tonight in front of my comrades, and I need you to be my test subject. I will be there. Next up is another episode from season six, that being overbooked. This episode is all about SpongeBob being, well, overbooked. The dude just doesn't have time for anything. It seems though that the animators also didn't have time as they overlooked a couple of mistakes in this episode that I'm about to expose. Roll the footage. I gotta use the laboratory. I'll be right back, I'm back. <laughs> Well, just leave my present over on the present table. <laughs> Your present? Well, what are you waiting for, buddy? Serve up the cake so I can tear into that present. I must have left it at Sandy's. You took it to Sandy's? No! I set up the bakery delivers. Isn't that handy? All right. So, when Patrick's Rock first opens in this scene, take a look at his party hat, okay? It's red. You can see it right here. Remember, it's red. However, in the next scene, this randomly changes, like, Coloring mistakes like this are hilarious when it just randomly changes. As it was red, but his party hat now changes to purple. Like, what? What's going on here? Like, how does it just change colors randomly? That looks like lazy animation to me. And that's not it for this episode. Here's another mistake. I give you... The Proto Generator 2000. This device gives a single laborer the productivity of five, six, seven, up to eight workers. Without further delay, I shall initiate... Sandy, I hate to delay the proceedings, but uh, I forgot to mail in this mail-in rebate and uh I'll be right back. This next one is just bad. Like, I don't know how any animator that understands SpongeBob and its characters could make this mistake. As you guys know, take a look at these shots of Sandy Cheeks. Our girl Sandy has a big furry tail. It's a big part of her character because she's a squirrel and squirrels have tails, right? Well, in Overbooked, the animators forgot about this as when Sandy says, without further delay, I shall initiate the proto sequence, um, her tail is missing. And it's not because of the angle. They just were too lazy to draw Sandy Cheeks' tail. Give my girl her tail back. She needs it. And guys, there's another mistake in this episode. Roll the footage. Uh, oh, hey, Patrick. What are you doing in town? I was just buying some birthday hats for my birthday party. Hello? My birthday cake! Oh, yeah! That! I was I'm just getting to that! I'm gonna go get your cake, you silly guy, you! 
it's really easy to miss, like very easy to miss, and shout out to our editor Josh for finding it, but before Spongebob walks away to get a cake, man, now I want cake, guys, I'm hungry, cake is so good, but as he walks away to get a cake, take a look at his left leg as it's entirely white for a split second. I mean, don't get me wrong, Spongebob's socks are supposed to be white, but his leg is supposed to be yellow. So this was another just really bad mistake. This episode's pretty rough in terms of mistakes, guys, but let's keep it moving and head over to another episode with even more spicy mistakes. You don't want to miss them. <laughs> Mr. Krabs trusted me and I let him down. This used to have the Krabby Patty secret ingredient inside, but now it's missing. What? Someone stole it, Patrick, and we need to find out who. Okay, up next is the Patty Caper from season six or the Patty Capper. Here's some clips from this episode. It's really funny. You Bob Pants? Uh, SpongeBob. Close enough. Now get out of here, kid. And now, let's get you into the Krabby Patty secret ingredient. <laughs> no! What's gonna happen to the Krabby Patty secret recipe? What's this? A hole? Almost as if someone did this on purpose. SpongeBob! What are you doing lollygagging about? Get back to work! <laughs> this first mistake is really funny. I don't know how this mistake even happened. Roll the footage. Only someone who specializes in science could reverse engineer the recipe based on the secret ingredient. There she is. Oh my gosh, it is Sandy. I was just storing food for the impending winner. What one? I'm on to you, squirrel. You thought no one could figure it out, but I pieced it together. Perhaps I walked into the Krusty Krab, purchased them, and received a receipt for these legally obtained patties. So as you know, the inside of Sandy's tree dome has air and water can't get in, right? But at one point of this episode, SpongeBob digs a tunnel to Sandy's tree dome underground. But for some reason, the tree dome does not fill entirely with water via the tunnel, despite the fact that the water flows into the tree dome. It like stops when this should have flooded Sandy's entire tree dome, guys. They're under sea, and this made an opening from the ocean into Sandy's tree dome. It wouldn't just fill with a little bit of water. They would drown. So yeah, I don't know what happened here, but here's another mistake. We ran out of the secret ingredient to the secret formula. Any minute now, a truck driver is going to arrive, and I'm entrusting you to retrieve the secret ingredient. It's time. Make sure to guard it with your life! I won't let you down. Wait! Yes? If something happens to that secret ingredient, don't bother coming back to work. Yeah. You need really good eyes to catch this one, as when the red lights flash at the Krusty Krab for a split second, okay, it happens really fast. If you look at the customers, you can actually see through them. The customers become transparent. You can see right through them. Each time the red light starts to fade, this one you'll need to see it in slow motion. We'll also have to stop the frame. But yeah, they're see-through when, as you know, people or fish, I guess, shouldn't be see-through. Totally a mistake. SpongeBob, will you knock off that racket? It's not me! It's Gary! Larry! That lousy monster! Larry, you meathead! Whatever you're doing, stop it! I need my sleep! <laughs> Season 13's Gary's Playhouse is another banger of a season 13 episode. Like, season 13's got that good good. Here, I'm not gonna give you guys like a plot summary, but here's just a quick little compilation of funny moments in the episode. Come on, buddy, it's late. Time to go inside. Mom, you wanna spend the night in your new playhouse? Aw, that is so cute. Where do you get a door? What? So cute! Oh. oh, that is the cutest thing I've ever seen! It's so cute! I can't breathe! No, I need water! What's that? Is that supposed to be me? Oh, that's... That's... 
The cutest thing I've ever seen. Tell me the word What are we bummered about? Dude, like I said, this episode is a good one. Go and watch it if you get a chance. But before that, here's one mistake from this episode. I'm going to go easy on this episode because it's a good episode, but there is one mistake. Take a look at this. SpongeBob! Squidward! Where were you two yesterday? Mr. Krabs. All right, so the galley grub menu, right? We were talking about the Krabby Patty spelling before, but what if the entire menu was just missing in a shot? Well, that's exactly what happens in Gary's Playhouse during this one scene right here. As as you can see, the galley grub menu is just gone. Like, I don't know what's going on here. Maybe, uh, maybe the Krusty Krab is moving into mobile orders or something, you know? Uh, I'm showing an image of these, like, little kiosks at McDonald's, you know what I'm talking about? Maybe Mr. Krabs, he's ahead of the curve, but I think they just forgot to draw the galley grub menu and uh yeah that's a bit of a mistake guys don't tell anyone now that my chum bot has dropped you into my clutches you'll be forced to eat at the chum bucket what you mean you kidnapped us just to sell us your fast food? Come on, it's a standard marketing technique. Now the plot of this next episode is really cool. It's enemy in law, and it's all about Plankton falling in love with Mr. Krabs' mother. Like dude is trying to riz up his enemies' moms, bro. Like Plankton's wildin' in this episode. It's even more funny because Betsy Krabs is like an old lady, dude. But anyways, Plankton's got some weird interests. I mean, I do too. I like exposing mistakes in cartoons. So here's the first mistake from this episode, Enemy in Law. Let's do it. <clears throat> I've reservations for two tonight. Your gentleman caller awaits. Yeah, so this one's a rough continuity error. So as you guys seen, when Plankton walks into the Krusty Krab with that rose to riz up Mr. Krabs' mom, we can see this burger sticker on the window right here and remember this as it's important. As once Plankton gets inside, where did it go? We're looking at the exact same window that it was on and now it's just gone during this scene. Seriously, first it's there as you can see here, but then where is it during this shot? Very, very weird. The same thing actually happens again. The poster's there, or I guess the stickers there, and then it disappears. So very, very strange mistake in this episode. And here's another one. Just dial the number and ask her to dinner. Come on, you can do this. <laughs> <laughs> this one's pretty straightforward. So Grapple Gang, this is a phone, all right? You guys know what a phone is. And as you can see, this is where the number zero would be, all right? This is also the number symbol, and this is also the star key. But at one point, when we get to see Plankton's phone, it's missing all of those things. It's missing the zero, it's missing the number symbol, and it's missing the star key. Which I mean, to be fair, this is like an, a cartoon for kids, and like they live in like Bikini Bottom world. But yeah, that's not how a phone is supposed to look and it's most likely a mistake and yeah let's keep it moving head over to another episode guys this one's gonna be a lot of fun i was merely emulating my latest media obsession kenny the cat kenny the cat what in clam's name is a uh... The cat! Let's head over to modern Spongebob for this next one. The episode's from season 12, which is a pretty good season, and the episode is Kenny the Cat. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna be blunt, I'm not a big fan of this episode. I think Kenny the Cat is kind of annoying, but it has its good moments. What it also has, of course, though, is this really bad mistake, and this one's bad. The art team got in trouble for this one, for sure. Roll the footage. <laughs> this gets real uncomfortable after a while. You guys might have missed it, but during this scene where Kenny gets his oxygen tank, if we zoom in on his right foot and pause, um, the animators forgot to color in and fill in his right foot. It's just completely transparent, and dude, look at how weird that looks. These are the mistakes where it's actually kind of bad, like I'll always give Spongebob a break because it's 2D animation, and 2D animation is hard, but mistakes like this where it's like a couple of seconds where somebody's foot was not colored in is pretty rough, so yeah. Let's head over to another episode, guys. Lots of really cool mistakes coming up. We're gonna light a fire under you, boy-o. Oh, oh no, that's gonna hurt. I 
Listen up, mister. No more fooling around. You're here to eat. And eat. And then eat some more. Next up, we've got an episode from Season 9, some modern Spongebob. Well, actually, is Season 9 even considered modern Spongebob anymore? This season came out like 10 years ago. But anyways, the episode's What's Eating Patrick, and this episode has two spicy mistakes. Here's the first one. I'll just have 47 Krabby Patties, please. I had a big breakfast, so I'm not that hungry. Squidward, did you get a new haircut? Yeah, this one's really, really, really bad. So, when Mr. Krab realizes that Patrick should join the competition, let's take a look at the order here sign in the background of the Krusty Krab, as the text that's normally on it is just gone, dude. Like, where is it? This is how it normally looks. Here's a shot from any other episode. It normally says order here, but in What's Eating Patrick during this one scene, the animators just completely forgot to put the text there, and it's just an empty sign. So, yeah. Let's keep it moving and head over to another episode with, I'm not even going to call these ones weird. These ones are wild mistakes. Let's keep it moving. I can protect my groceries now. Here's another episode from Modern Spongebob. In this one, I actually really like it. The episode is Squid Defense, and it's all about Squidward wanting to learn karate so he can kick some butt after nearly getting robbed at the beginning of the episode. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show the mistakes, but look at this clip of Squidward nearly getting mugged. Um, hello? It's considered rude not to answer. Ah! I gotta get out of here! <laughs> Dude, Squidward almost got caught lacking, bro. He almost got smoked. But anyways, let's smoke Nickelodeon by revealing this mistake. The rubbery arms and the doughiness in this area. We obviously All right, I'm ready. We've been through this. Yeah, so any hardcore SpongeBob fan should have caught this one. But take a look at this clip from Culture Shock when Squidward does his little tentacle dance. And as you can see, he has this many tentacles. Remember this as it's important. As in Squid Defense, when Sandy pokes him in the stomach, which is hilarious, by the way, Squidward seems to only have two tentacles, which is like incorrect. He's supposed to have this many. Look at those dance moves, though. Like, damn, Squidward, bust a move, my boy. <laughs> Anyways, here's another mistake from this episode. You missed the spot. <laughs> this one's quick and you guys definitely should have caught it. So take a look at this random PNG of Sandy right here, our favorite squirrel. And what you'll notice is like many squirrels, she has a tail. Now this is a pretty common mistake in SpongeBob. It happens fairly often. Um, Sandy's missing something while she's holding the umbrella. Where is her tail? It's gone. Like I said, somewhat of a common mistake in SpongeBob, but yeah, here's another mistake from this episode. There's a lot, guys, so be prepared. It's a delicate art that helps you protect yourself. Yeah, fine. Great. Repeat after me. Hi -ya! Hi -ya! Oh, whatever. Hi -ya. So for this one, you really need to get a good eye at the frames, all right? It's very important you guys pay close attention for this one. But when Squidward says, oh, whatever, hi-ya, and then does some karate moves, there's something up with Sandy's white teeth. Now, here's a random shot of Sandy from this same episode, and as you can see, she has very white teeth. Our girl be brushing her teeth on the regular. But later on in the episode, I guess she lost her toothbrush or something, as look, her teeth change color slightly. If you look, they're actually more like the same color as the bottom part of her mouth. Here's a side-by-side -side so you can see they're definitely not as white as they normally are, and this is somewhat of a coloring error here. What do you guys think happened? Let me know. But here's one more mistake from this episode, and this one's really bad if you're a classic SpongeBob fan. <laughs> oh, wait, I, I don't get it. SpongeBob, open up! Ah! Um, Squidward? It's just Gary. So this happens at the very beginning of the episode. And first things first, as you can see, SpongeBob and Gary are just chilling on the couch, right? They're just having a chill night, probably watching some Netflix or actually Paramount Plus, don't tell Nickelodeon. They maybe even got a Krusty Krab pizza on the way, they're chilling. The most important thing is the couch though. As when Squidward eventually comes to SpongeBob's house panicking and SpongeBob lets him inside, dude, where did the couch go? Did like SpongeBob and Gary put it away so Squidward could come in? 
in. It was literally just there seconds ago, as you can see here, and then now it's gone. So a really funny mistake, if anything. And here's more from another episode. Oh, look. It's a picture I took of you the first time I ever came here. Ah, look at you, so young and happy. Where do the years go? Speaking of SpongeBob's couch, the season three episode Party Pooper Pants has a really funny mistake revolving around it. Take a look at this. Yeah, this one's simple. So as you guys seen before, normally SpongeBob's couch looks like this. It's like blue and green. It's always looked like this. But in Party Pooper Pants near like the beginning, SpongeBob's couch is just completely colored like incorrectly. It's like red or something. It's never been colored like this since or before this. I just thought I'd mention this one because it's funny. And let's head over to another episode with more mistakes. Let's go gang, 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 gang. And furthermore, I will carry out my duty. Crime and punishment, punishment and crime and the ha! Which reminds me of an extremely long speech written by the greatest hall monitor of all time. For this next one, we're going back in time to the good old days of SpongeBob with Hall Monitor. This is a fan favorite of an episode where Mrs. Puff makes SpongeBob Hall Monitor for the week, but SpongeBob takes it way too seriously, fam, and starts going around thinking he's like a real cop. I'm gonna show some funny clips from this episode first, but then we're gonna get into two spicy mistakes. It's alive! The maniacs in the mailbox! I love this episode, dude. And as a matter of fact, Grapple Gang, after I'm done making this video, I'm literally going to go and watch the episode. And you should too after you're done watching this video, of course. But here's the first mistake. Let's take a look at this. Poor rookie. All right, I'm on my way back. Hurry, SpongeBob. I think it's getting dark. Just put on your siren, I'll be right there. This one happens really fast, guys, and I had to rewatch the scene multiple times to even catch it, but during this scene where Patrick says it is getting dark, if we look, some of these buildings right here move slightly to the right. Here's a side-by-side -side where you can see before and after, and just, yeah, they slightly just move randomly. Very weird, and here's another mistake from this episode that's just as weird, if not worse. Afternoon, son. Hello, brothers. Son, we're looking for the maniac. Like I said, this one is way, way, way worse. So when the police officers arrive and ask Patrick about the maniac and they just like make fun of him about it, it's really funny. There is a massive mistake with officer John Slugfish over here, specifically his eyes. As you can see, he is an orange fish. But during this one shot right here, the animators made a mistake and gave him the same like eye lids as the other police officer. So he's orange, but if you look, his eyelids are are green, which is totally a mistake. His eyelids should be orange. As a matter of fact, here's a quick shot from earlier on in this scene and his eyelids are orange. But in this one shot, they're green, which is a massive mistake, dude. Like a really bad mistake too. Not as bad as this next one though, guys. Let's head over to another episode. Do they give a show to just anybody over there? Pretty much. My mom gave me this one for my birthday. Really? Yeah, I wanted a guitar or a star named after me, but you know, whatever. I guess a TV show is cool. Next up, we've got a season seven banger. I'm talking about Tentacle Vision, an episode where Squidward gets his very own TV show, which is perfect for Squidward and egomaniac. Now I'm gonna get into the mistakes, but this episode's really good. So here's some funny scenes from the episode, and then we'll get right into the really bad mistakes in this episode. Take a look at these funny scenes first. How sophisticated. Has been cancelled. <laughs> oh yeah, I haven't made the coffee yet. Squidward! Hey, 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 hey! Hey, hey, Squidward! You're on TV! No, I'm on TV. See the camera? Dude, there are so many funny moments in this episode. I love it. What I don't love, though, is this mistake. It's bad. Take a look at this.
So you have to pay close attention to catch this one. So when Squidward takes the remote, we can see that the remote has this one red button right here. Let's remember this. As in the next scene, once we see the remote again, where's the red button? It's suddenly just a black button. And look guys, I highly doubt Squidward changed his remote, his TV remote mid episode. So yeah, you can tell the animators colored it as red at first, but then forgot and colored it as black. And that's not even it for tentacle vision. Here's another spicy mistake from this episode. Today on Squidward Chat. Squidward on TV? <laughs> If you thought that one was bad, this one's much worse. So take a look at this shot of SpongeBob's living room from season one. And as you can see, SpongeBob has always had his iconic couch. It's a really nice couch. It's like green and blue and it's iconic. It's been there ever since like the first episode. Well, in Tentacle Vision, when Gary is seen changing the channel, where is the couch? It's just missing from the living room entirely. Like it should be right there, but it's gone. And to make things even more funny, when SpongeBob eventually comes back into the room, look, it reappears here when it just wasn't there during this scene, which is just funny more than anything. They just didn't draw the couch. And here's another one from Tentacle Vision. This one has a lot of mistakes. You're on TV too. TV? As I was saying. Now this one's kind of minor. It's kind of like a consistent mistake throughout SpongeBob, but this right here is a PNG of Squidward tentacles. And a big part of Squidward's design are the wrinkles on his forehead. They're always there. Even during certain facial expressions, he'll still have them there because he's such a miserable, tired squid. Well, when Squidward says moron after SpongeBob leaves his house in this scene, where are his wrinkles? It's only for like a frame, so it's not a big deal. But look at how weird Squidward looks without his iconic forehead wrinkles, you know? Maybe he's finally taking care of his health for once. All right, let's keep it moving over to another episode, guys. Lots of mistakes to come. Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! SpongeBob, careful! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Careful, SpongeBob! Patrick, the lid's already off. Oh, now it's my turn. I say this all the time, but the best episodes of SpongeBob are from seasons one, two, and three. So I'm stoked to be talking about Wet Painters, a season three banger of an episode. You know what's coming though, guys. It's time for that childhood to be ruined. Here's the first mistake from this episode. The two of you are to paint the inside of me house. So if I see even one drop on anything but wool, so have fun with the job. Did you guys catch it? Well, listen closely as this one's a little complicated. So when Mr. Krabs brings SpongeBob and Patrick over for the first time, and he reveals his big plan for them to paint his house, we can see him open his door. And first things first, as you can see, there is no doorknob on this door, which is fine. But more importantly though, if we look at how the door opens and closes, it opens to the left to the inside of Mr. Krabs' house. Okay, remember this? It opens to the left to the inside of his house. Well, here Here's the problem. As this scene progresses, we get this shot right here where SpongeBob and Patrick are backing up and look, there's a doorknob now. In the original shot I mentioned, there's no doorknob, but now there is. And then once we see SpongeBob and Patrick go in the house during this shot shortly after, the door now opens to the right to the outside of Mr. Krabs' house. Here's a side-by-side -side of how the door opened before and how it opens now. Right there, you can see a massive mistake. And as I said, there's like a door handle or doorknob now when that wasn't there in the original shot. So a funny little continuity error here in this episode. And here's another mistake from this same episode. <laughs> oh, now I see it. Did it work? No. Did it work? No. Oh. Did it work? No. Did you guys catch it? This one's pretty quick and pretty simple, but if you really think about it, how did paint get smeared on both sides of the dollar? Here's the scene where the paint actually gets on the dollar and then it's faced up towards the wall. So like, how would it get on both sides? Yeah, I'm overthinking this one, but technically a mistake if you think about it. But guys, let's keep it moving and head over to another episode of SpongeBob. And trust me, you won't want to miss these mistakes. This is where things get wild. Wait, wait. Why? I'm ready, Squidward. Ready to move? No, I'm ready 
to pass my boating test! Coming in hot is the season 1 episode, Boating School. Now this episode is iconic, not only because it's a season 1 episode, but also because it's the debut episode of Mrs. Puff. This was her first appearance in the show ever, and who knew that she would go on to be such an iconic character. Now, let's dive into that first mistake, it's a rough one, take a look at this. What's the problem? I can't pass my boating exam. Testing, 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 testing! So as you guys just seen, we get a couple of shots where SpongeBob goes to sit in his library room, all right? And what's most important here is the color of the chair, all right? As you can see, it is black. Remember this, all right? Remember this. As eventually, when Patrick sits there, look, now it's purple. Here's a quick side-by-side. -side. First it was black, now it's purple. Yeah, that is a mistake. A chair doesn't just randomly change color. It is a season one episode though, so I'll give them a break, alright? 2D animation is hard, but jeez. Anyways though, here's another mistake from the same episode. All you have to do is get on the track. Okay, you're coming to your first turn. So, in order for Spongebob to get his driver's license, he has to complete this obstacle course to prove that he can drive. Obvious, right? Now here's the issue. When we first see the order of the obstacles in this shot before Spongebob arrives, we can see that the order goes like this, alright? Remember this. When Spongebob finally arrives, the order of the obstacles completely changes. Again, here's a side-by-side, -side, and you can see at first it looked like this, now it looks like this. The obstacles are like the same, but the order is entirely different now, so totally a mistake. And guys, let's keep it moving and head over to another Spongebob episode with some of the worst mistakes I've ever seen. <laughs> Two whole days without nonsense. For a good run, Mr. Squidward. But we both knew it couldn't last. We've got a season 12 episode coming in hot next. The episode is Hiccup Plague. Here are some funny clips from this episode, and then of course, we're gonna get right into the mistakes after, so hang tight. I have a foolproof hiccup cure. Using an old Navy trick. Old Navy trick? Okay, go for it. Boo. Uh, try drinking water upside down. Try a chair. <laughs> All right, it is mistake time, baby. Here's the first one. Oh, hi, Mrs. Buff. Oh, hello. Yeah, so during that scene you guys just saw right there, Pearl, she's missing the P that's normally on her shirt. Here's a P and G of Pearl. As you can see, normally she has that P on it, and in this one shot, it's just missing from her shirt. It just was not drawn. Here's another mistake from this episode, though. This one's pretty spicy, too. Uh, try drinking water upside down. Try a chair. Pearl isn't the only person missing something in this episode, as during this scene outside of Sandy's tree dome, um, Mrs. Puff's spots are missing. Here's a shot of Mrs. Puff. Normally, she has these spots all over her face. And in this one shot from Hiccup Plague, where are they? Where'd they go? Because they're, they're not there. They're gone. Our next episode is from Modern SpongeBob, season 12 to be exact, and it's One Trick Sponge. This episode's all right. It's pretty much about SpongeBob learning a new magic trick. Not the best episode, in my opinion. And so, let's move right into the good stuff. Well, the not-so-good stuff. That being the mistakes. This episode has one. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Is this by any chance a trick where you produce money coins from behind people's ears? Wink, wink. Mm? No. Then what's the... Ah! Hi, Fred. Ooh, are you going to saw my leg in half? Uh, no, th this isn't going to involve your leg. Now listen, Grapple Gang, this one is pretty complicated, so I need you guys to pay close attention, alright? So, when Spongebob goes to Fred's house right here, Fred is the dude who's always like, My leg! 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 
Yeah, that guy. When SpongeBob goes to his house, the direction he moves would mean that Fred's house is opposite from Mr. Krabs and Pearl's house, as you can see right here. Remember this, based on this shot, it would mean that Fred's house is like opposite to Mr. Krabs. You gotta remember this. However, in a later shot, Mr. Krabs' house is nowhere to be seen and is replaced with a kelp forest. So I don't know what happened here. The animators at first drew it as if Fred's house is right across from Mr. Krabs, but then they forgot and were lazy and then just drew a kelp forest instead. Not that big of a deal because it's a cartoon, but this is still a weird mistake. Some continuity errors, but let's keep it moving and head over to our next episode. This one is crazy, guys. Stay tuned. I'm going to make this one very, very quick. Roll the footage. Here's the mistake in the episode, selling out. Do you know what's in that Krabby Patty you're eating? No. <laughs> See that? Without all your smoke and mirrors, no one would stomach this garbage. What'd he say? Garbage? Okay, so this character right here is Incidental 42, and in every episode before this one, this character always has a male voice, okay? A male voice. Here are some examples. Thanks for the roses, SpongeBob. Happy Valentine's Day. Hey, free Krabby Patties. This is a load of barnacles. I heard that! As you heard, this dude, it sounds like a dude, right? But in the episode Selling Out, Incidental 42 has a female voice when he says, what did he say? Garbage? What do you say? Garbage? Really strange mistake, but let's keep it rolling, baby. Let's keep this show going. One really good episode from season 13 is Goofy Scoopers. I mean, anything Goofy Goobers related, I love. But like any episode, this episode has a mistake. Here's the mistake. Let's see if you can catch it. <laughs> I did like being a bridge, but I was built to make music. Now let's yeah. rock! This one's just really funny, but at the ending of the episode, during this close-up of Clem Clam playing the trumpet, that man is playing the heck out of that trumpet, take a look at his shirt, as the stripes on his shirt switch colors at the end. First it looks like this, but then they just switch colors, which is really strange. But let's keep it moving, gang. We've got more mistakes than this, and they're spicy. The episode Whale of a Birthday is filled to the brim when it comes to mistakes. Like, there are so many mistakes in this episode. For now, we're gonna focus on these three spicy ones. Here are some clips. Let's see if you guys can catch them. This sea pony is the cutest thing ever. Do you want to come home and be my pony? <laughs> <laughs> so this is another somewhat complicated one, but once I point it out, it'll make total sense to you guys, right? When Pearl and her friends are at the mall, as you can see here, she looks at the sea pony. I kind of want a sea pony, guys. That'd be kind of cool. But more importantly, in the first shot, it shows the dogfish tank right next to it with a clear separation of the two tanks, okay? Remember this. On one side, there is a sea pony in one tank, and then on the other side, there's the dogfish. And there's this thing right here, which clearly divides them and separates them into two different tanks. But a few seconds later, the sea pony shares a tank with the dogfish. They're just in one tank. Like, the entire art of this one spot looks completely different now, which was like a really lame mistake on the animators end. Like, I don't even know how they made this mistake. It's very easy to miss, but let's keep it moving. Mistake number two is just as spicy. Roll the footage. Oh my gosh, it's Billy Fishkin. Hi, Hi Billy. Billy. Me. <sighs> oh, isn't he dreamy? Price check on four. Now this one isn't too big of a deal. It's still like a bad mistake, but I could understand how the animators slipped up on it. But when Pearl and her friends meet Billy over here, when facing in the front, um, her lipstick disappears for an entire frame. It's only for like one frame and then it pops back in. Like you'll only catch it by the footage being in slow motion. But I mean, it still happens. A little bit of a mistake here, not that big of a deal. Let's move over to the next mistake, which is a pretty big deal. Roll the footage. Are you guys coming to my totally coral birthday party tomorrow? Is this gonna be as totally coral as last year? <laughs> when your dad passed out paper clips as party favors? Can't wait to see how he ruins this year. <laughs> Uh-oh, everybody! 
be braced for impact! Yeah! <laughs> Tell me you've got something totally coral planned for my birthday party. You've ruined all my birthday parties, but you better not ruin this one. Now promise me you won't be cheap. <clears throat> I promise. I have no idea how this mistake happened, but first of all, here's a clip of the inside of the Krusty Krab. And as you can see, the tables look like this. This is like the normal table design of the Krusty Krab. It's looked like this ever since Help Wanted, the first ever episode of SpongeBob. But the animators were tweaking in this episode because when Pearl runs into the Patreons of the Krusty Krab crying in this one scene, um, the tables are like plain beige. They're just like this random different coloring design instead of their normal designs. Normally they look like this, but in this one shot, I don't know what they were doing this episode, what was going on at the SpongeBob animation offices, but that's not how the Krusty Krab tables look. So yeah, a big mistake here. And let's keep it moving guys. Let's head over to the next episode. Let's go, let's keep this going. Our next mistake can be found in the episode Shell of a Man from season four. You know, season four is pretty hit or miss for me because that's when Steven Hillenburg kind of left the show, but I don't hate this episode, it's good. What I don't like about this episode though, as you guys can guess, is the mistake. There's one that's really bad and it's kind of hard to catch. Let's see if you guys can catch it. What's in this thing? Treasure? A treasure trove of sorts. <laughs> Why'd you dig up your Navy chest, sir? Well, my Navy buddies and I are having a reunion. This is me manly toughness trophy. Who are those guys? Me shipmates. The toughest bunch to ever sail a briny deep. Did you have a cool nickname, Mr. Krabs? Of course. I was old Armor Abs Krabs. You were? So watch closely, guys. This one, like I said, can be kind of complicated. So when Mr. Krabs shows SpongeBob all of his old Navy treasures, take a look at the left flag in his office with the white and blue triangles, okay? If you watch slowly throughout this scene, this flag and the triangles keep rotating. First it looks like this, then it looks like this, then it looks like this. Very easy to miss because it's in the background of the scene, and I mean like, who cares? I care though, because this is a mistake, and it's a pretty bad one once you catch it. But anyways, let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. First up is the season four episode, Ghost Host. An episode all about SpongeBob and the Flying Dutchman having to stay together after the Flying Dutchman is like too broke to get himself a new place. He crashes his boat, so he has to stay with SpongeBob and he just stays way too long. But anyways, this episode has two mistakes in total. Here's the first one. Let's see if you guys can spot this one. <laughs> I'm not scary anymore. Just what kind of talk is that? Dutchie, do you want to spend eternity on this couch? Well, it is comfy. Look in the mirror. You're a ghost of your former self, but we're going to raise you up from your squalid condition. Watch now. What in barnacles is it? A journey into self-awareness. So I want to give credit where credit's due. This mistake was actually pointed out to me by one of you guys in the Grapple Gang, so shout out to you. But during this scene where SpongeBob is going to start the Journey into Self-Awareness video, um, his red tie, which is supposed to be red, is the same color as his skin. His tie is yellow, so I guess the animators accidentally colored his tie in as yellow instead of red, making for a really bad mistake, guys. Like, what? And there's more. There's another mistake in this episode, Roll the footage. I'm a flying Dutchman! <laughs> what are you doing in my house? I'm stuck here while my ship is being repaired. Till then, I'm here to haunt ya! <laughs> People just don't believe in ghosts anymore. Wait a minute. I think you just gave me the answer to all your problems. I heard you don't believe in ghosts. Ghosts? As in the Flying Dutchman! <laughs> Scary. No! No! That's impossible! Two mistakes in one episode. Jeez, Nickelodeon. But when the Flying Dutchman raids Squidward's house, um, the Flying Dutchman has five fingers, as you can see here. Remember this. I'm zooming in. This man has five fingers. But later, when he's at SpongeBob's house, he now only has four. What happened? In this shot, he has five fingers. But then in this shot, he has four. Well, this is a cartoon. I mean, cartoon characters only having four fingers is kind of a common thing. But it doesn't change halfway through the episode. This was a mistake, and let's keep it moving, guys. Let's head over to the next episode. 
First up is the episode Funny Pants, and boy oh boy does this episode have a lot of mistakes. Like, there's like 10 plus, but for now we're gonna focus on a couple. Here are some clips. You're burning up, SpongeBob! I am. Temperature is 175 degrees! Is that bad? SpongeBob, you've got to be careful! You're going to burn out your laugh box! My laugh box? If you burn out your laugh box, you'll live your whole life without ever laughing again! Hey, Patrick, you want to hear a joke? Sure, Sandy. I'd love a good laugh. What has four wheels and flies? A garbage truck. <laughs> <laughs> Did you catch it? That first mistake takes place during this scene, during SpongeBob's daydream. When Sandy tells SpongeBob if he wants to hear a joke, as you can see, her tail is there. She's got her tail, her fluffy little squirrel tail. But when SpongeBob says, sure, I'd love a good laugh, and it cuts right back to them, um, where is Sandy's tail? Where'd her tail go? Squirrels don't just randomly lose their tail, guys. I think the animators forgot to draw her tail during this scene. And guys, this happens a lot throughout this episode. For example, this scene right here. Roll the footage. Maybe I should ask Sandy. Now, what is laughter? The thing that used to give my life meaning and purpose. But scientifically speaking, it's caused by your epiglottis constricting your larynx, causing irregular air intake and respiratory upset. Sounds painful. Here's some humor theory textbooks, uh, laugh mechanics, and the quantum giggle theory. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, like I said, it happens a lot. During this scene where Sandy pulls down this chart of the body, um, where's her tail again? It's gone. I mean, it's only gone for a split second, but it's still gone. That girl's missing her tail. That's not the only thing she's missing in this episode, guys. As take a look at this scene at the ending of the episode, it's not her tail that's missing this time. It's something else. Can you guys catch it? Leave a comment before I actually show you the mistake. Let's see if you guys can catch it on your own. But yeah, roll the footage. Spot Bob, there's no such thing as a laugh. Box. I made the whole thing up. <laughs> you really fell for it. What a shameal! <laughs> Look, he's waking up. Um. Where am I? You're in the hospital, silly. You broke your laugh box. So they cut it out. Cut it out? Yeah. Want to see it? It's fun to shake it up and watch it bounce around. Ah! Again, it happens near the ending of the episode. But when SpongeBob wakes up from his coma, um, Sandy's zipper and badge are just missing from her suit. They're just gone. Here's a shot of how it normally looks. As you can see, she has all the designs on her drippy suit. But in this one shot, they're just not there. Again, the animators just didn't draw them. So yeah, yeah, they're really doing Sandy dirty in this episode, guys. She's missing her tail twice, and they even messed up on her iconic suit. I feel bad for Sandy, but anyways, let's keep the episode going, guys. We've got tons of episodes in this video, tons of mistakes, so yeah, stay tuned. Let's head back over to modern Spongebob for this next one, the good old HD era of Spongebob. Look at how good this footage looks. I mean, the episodes aren't as good in season 12, but they look really good, that's for sure. But the episode in question is Swamp Mates. Now I'm gonna get right into the mistake for this one. There is one. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Put on those mistake glasses, guys. Look for the mistake. Hi, Luther, Cletus. I found them fellas what blowed up our stale. <laughs> If only I had something large and buoyant. Hop on, friend! Friend? Right, buddy? B -b 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 buddy? So take a look at this shot right here. This is how Bubble Bass normally looks. More importantly, this is how his eyes look. It's fairly normal, right? They're normal eyes. Even if we go back to Pickles, his debuted episode, he still looks like this, right? You can see, this is how his eyes look. Well, in Swamp Mates, when Bubble Bass says our only escape, um, his eyes are the same color as his glasses. What is going on here? I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but guys, you know that looks really rough. But this is a mistake, guys, and we've got more. Let's Let's keep the video going. Okay, so our next mistake can be found in another season 13 episode, Squidward's Sick Days. And this one is really funny because when you really think about it, it's actually like a hilarious mistake. Here are the clips, roll the footage. Oh, I can't believe I'm dreaming about work when there's so many more interesting things I could be doing. My unfinished painting, my unfinished symphony, and my uneaten strudel. <laughs> 
this my strudel. So this delicious looking strudel right here, guys. I want a bite of this. Do you want a bite of it? Leave a comment. Would you eat this strudel? I want some of it. But yeah, the strudel, okay? As you can see, there is steam coming off of it, so it's hot, right? Like they're really animating this strudel as if it's hot. It's steaming hot. But here's the problem. Squidward had just woken up, right? Like he just woke up during the scene. And we know that he made the strudel the day before, yesterday, right? He made it and then put it out by the window so it would cool the previous day. So how is it hot still? He made the strudel yesterday and he just woke up. The dude didn't just wake up and the strudel was still hot. So this is just a really silly mistake. I hope you guys get what I'm saying for it because this is a bad one. But anyways, during that same scene, there's actually another mistake. I'm gonna roll the clip again really quickly. Did you spot it? Oh, I can't believe I'm dreaming about work when there's so many more interesting things I could be doing. My unfinished painting, my unfinished symphony, and my uneaten strudel. <laughs> My strudel! Yeah, so when Patrick bites into that delicious strudel that is somehow still hot, even though it's a day old, um, Patrick's eyebrows disappear for a split second. It literally only happens for a second as he's eating the pastry, but yeah, talk about two mistakes in one scene, guys. And I have one more mistake from this episode. One more. Oh, yes, I like that. Uh-huh. <gasps> Squidward, you're overexciting yourself. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. In my imagination, you're a helpless little baby. Gee, you're sicker than I thought. So take a look at this painting right here, okay? As you can see in the painting, SpongeBob is holding a baby Squidward. Aw, Squidward, you're such a cute baby. Now, as you can see, SpongeBob's arm on the left from our viewing perspective is yellow right here. But take a look at his other arm in the picture as it's green. The animator's messed up. His arm's supposed to be yellow, but his arm's the same color as Squidward. Dude, what? This is a really bad one, guys. Look at how awkward that looks, but well, let's keep it moving and head over to another episode. Up next is a sneaky, sneaky mistake in the episode, Pat the Dog. Roll the footage. <laughs> Patrick's my friend. Sometimes if he's eating worm food by mistake, he goes into worm mode. Well, if he's not trained in a few days so he can be adopted, he'll have to be locked up. He's already housebroken. Uh, I knew he was broken. I thought it was house. Dead. <laughs> Um, almost. Shall we try roll over? <laughs> Patrick, wait! <laughs> So I already know that this one needs some explaining because it's just a very subtle and complicated error. But when SpongeBob says Patrick wait, if you look closely, his right thumb and arm are only partially outlined and they kind of look a little neon green. Forget about the neon green part though. What really matters here is as you can see on one side of his arm, there's the outline and then the other half where his thumb and the inside of his arm are, they just weren't outlined. It's a very simple mistake. The animators, I don't know what they were doing, but our last episode of today's video has an even crazier mistake. It's one of the craziest ones we've ever covered. Let's get right into it. And last but not least is the episode The Krusty Bucket. This episode has quite the elaborate plot. Here's some clips summarizing what happens in this episode. It'll help make the mistake make a ton more sense. Using the DNA from Krabs' hair, I will create a combo clone of me and Krabs. <laughs> Two-Face, what's the big idea? What have you been doing all this time? Oh, nothing much, -er, just stealing the formula -er, and kicking crabs out on his booty. -er. All it took me, Hardy, was a hearty handshake. Oh, your handshake is exquisite. I'd believe anything you say. Then believe this, Swabby. I'll also be coming dearer in the chum bucket from now on. Creepy one eyed crab took me restaurant. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think he took mine too. <laughs> Plankton gets into some wacky science in this episode. Like he made a clone fusing himself with his arch nemesis, his biggest enemy ever, Mr. Krabs. What's a crazy episode, but you know what's even more crazy? You guessed it, the mistake in this episode, guys. Roll the footage, let's see if you guys can spot it. You guys, fighting, 
Toilet paper everywhere! He did it! We did it! No, no he, he did, did it! No, he did it! No, he did it! No, he did it! No, he did it! Get off of him, Plankton! It was obviously Krabs' fault! What are you saying with Plankton? Take it! Be so Go back to your corners where the bell rings and come out fighting. But first, you gotta shake hands. This is a great handshake. This is yet another complicated mistake. I mean, it's not that complicated, but you gotta listen closely or else you'll be like, what are you talking about, Cartoon Cory? But anyways, when Plank Crab, which is like the hybrid clone of Plankton and Mr. Krabs, is splitting up, both red and green Plank Crab have red hands, okay? You can see it right here. I'm zooming in on it. Both red and green Plank Crab have red hands. But after successfully splitting, red Plank Crab has green hands now. So like I said in this shot, dude has red hands. Hands, but now he has green hands, which is a bit of an animation mix up here. I guess it's not that big of a deal, but it's a mistake. That is for sure. I love this next episode, Enemy in Law, just because the plot is so funny. Plankton falls in love with Betsy Krabs, Mr. Krabs' mom. Imagine having like a mortal enemy and falling in love with their mama. Their mama. Plankton, you're crazy. Anyways, though, here are some clips summarizing this episode. It's really funny. Everything I do is always wrong in your eyes. Maybe it's because you are always wrong. Why Fatty did I ever Fatty. install you know, that nagging man. software? Nagging software, I heard that. Why did I ever buy that computer around. wife? <laughs> <laughs> Such beauty. I've never felt like this before. Your gentleman caller awaits. Hello, my dear. I'd like to hear about you. Well... Like the crabs! Eugene! Mommy? Mommy? SpongeBob! Mrs. Krabs in full view of this restaurant. Would you marry me? Ooh. This episode is full of mistakes. You guys know the drill. I'm gonna play some clips and the mistake's gonna be in there. Hopefully you guys can spot it. <coughs> I've reservations for two tonight. Like this way, sir. You put me boyfriend down this instant. Boyfriend? But mommy. You heard the lady, let me go. I'm sorry me son had to spoil our romantic evening. You. Eugene! I came to warn you, Plankton. Stay away from me, Mother. I know what you're really up to. Now stop trying to get the formula out of me, Mother! What are you talking about? So there's actually two mistakes going on here, and it has to do with the interior of the Krusty Krab. So first things first, take a look at this scene where Mr. Krabs barges into the chum bucket in anger, as some scenes show these red pipes on the wall, but then some scenes where we get the same shots are missing the red pipes. So in some shots, there's red pipes. Some shots, there aren't. I don't know what the plumbing situation is in the Krusty Krab, but they need to get that sorted. And that's not it. As when Plankton walks into the Krusty Krab with a rose during this scene, as you can see right here, there is a burger sticker on the window. Now I'm hungry. I really want to go and get myself a McDouble. But the problem is, once Plankton's actually inside the store, there is now no stickers at all. This then happens again when Mr. Krabs walks in. You can see the sticker, the burger sticker, but then from the inside, it's gone. So some continuity errors going on with this scene. Mrs. Puff has to deal with a lot of crap, especially from SpongeBob, one of her worst boating school students. Like seriously, it's been 20 plus years and SpongeBob is still failing that boating exam. And don't get me wrong, I love the little dude, but I do feel sorry for Mrs. Puff. Well, that was until I seen the episode, No Free Rides. An episode that revolves around Mrs. Puff lying and passing SpongeBob on his exam, just so that she doesn't have to deal with him anymore. However, this comes with a bunch of guilt, with this decision risking the safety of pretty much every other Bikini Bottom resident. Now the mistake in question can be found during this scene. As you can see, the word accident is shown on a billboard. However, it's spelt incorrectly. Well, it isn't necessarily incorrect, but it's the Spanish spelling of the word, which is incorrect considering this is the US or English version of the episode. In the Spanish version, it's not a mistake, but in this one, this is actually a mistake. So yeah, here's a clip. And now back to K-R-U-D with all of your personal You won't get away with stealing my car hits. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Hey, 
Hey, look. Next up, we have the episode Dying for Pi, a really good episode that unfortunately has two mistakes. The first mistake has to do with Squidward, and it happens at the ending of the episode. You need to see it in slow motion for you to really catch it, but take a look. You want me to explode? Yes! That's what I've been waiting for! Okay, I'll try. So as you just seen, a piece of Squidward's head gets cut off. Like I said, you need to see it in slow motion, but look, it's just missing. There's a chunk of his head just cut off. Now, to be honest, the other mistake isn't too bad, but it's still a mistake. Now, at the beginning of the episode, we see Squidward arrive at work, and look, something's missing. Normally, the Chum Bucket is across the street from the Krusty Krab, as you can see in this shot, and there's even a little path. But in this episode's opening shot, the path and the Chum Bucket are gone. Next up, I've got three mistakes revolving around signs in the Krusty Krab, and these are complicated guys, so listen closely. So as I mentioned earlier, in the Krusty Krab, there is the Galley Grub menu, the menu with all of the different food items. There's also an Order Here sign, okay? But these have major errors throughout the episode. Let's see if you can catch the Order Here one. Can I have a job application? I brought my own spatula. I called earlier, but I hung up because I was nervous. Do you have references? Wait, if that was you on the phone and you on the bus, who was flickering the lights? <laughs> Nosferatu. Yeah, the animators definitely need to work on their spelling, as they spell order here as order H-E-A-R, and the spelling mistakes don't end there. So Gally Grub is supposed to be spelt as G-A-L-L-E-Y-G-R-U-B. Remember this. But take a look at this shot. Where it will be closing time right about now. Eight o'clock. So long, suckers. I got a hot date with a little lady, and her name is Clarinet. As you've seen, it's misspelt as G A L L Y Grub, missing the E. And it's misspelt again in this shot. Yes, you and me together for hours and hours and hours, and then the sun will come up, and it'll be tomorrow, and we'll still be working. Are you ready? The Rock Squidward! No. Good! Cause we got customers! Yeah. Please hit me as hard as you can. With it being spelt as G-A-L-L-A-Y, grub. Another spelling mistake, so pretty funny, but let's move on to another mistake that's even crazier. The opening of the episode Big Pink Loser has a massive mistake. It's really bad, but it's easy to miss. Take a look. Let's see if you guys catch it. Hold still, Gary. Wow. Almost done. Fudgebug, guess what? I got it away. <laughs> What's it for? See for yourself. For outstanding achievement and achievement. So here's the thing. Patrick is supposed to come through that door, and we even hear the door open, but as you can see in the slow motion footage, the door never opens. <laughs> Patrick just pops in, he just spawns in randomly and knocks over the house of cards. Like seriously, listen to it again and listen for the door opening. They put a door opening sound in, but then didn't animate the door opening. It's really funny. Hold still, Gary. Wow. Almost done. The other mistake is just as bad. Here, take a look. It was sure nice of Mr. Krabs to give me a job. And at $50 an hour, too. When I started working here, I had to pay Mr. Krabs $100 an hour. Do I get my award yet? You have to work for it, remember? Dude, what happened to Patrick's mouth? It's just gone. The animators just forgot to draw his mouth for a frame, and it looks really weird. Okay, so this next one's really funny, as there's two very obvious mistakes in one scene. Let's take a look at this first one. It has to do with SpongeBob's shirt. And I mean, where does it all go? Huh? You know what I mean? Huh. 
what smells rotten and puts people to sleep. Um, not just gas? No! Your act! <laughs> Did you catch it? Well, SpongeBob's missing the white part of his shirt. It's just all brown. Normally, SpongeBob looks like this. He has a white shirt, as you guys already know. But in this one shot, he looks like this. Now, here's the question, though. Did you guys catch the other mistake in this scene? Well, let's take a look at Incidental 40. As you can see, he's wearing a white shirt. What smells rotten? and puts people to sleep. But then when he tries to diss or burn SpongeBob with his weak insult, he's now shirtless. Um, not just gas? No! Your act! <laughs> So the animators, they like drew him with a shirt and then seconds later removed his shirt? Talk about a weird mistake. Let's move on. One of my favorite season two episodes is Procrastination, an episode where SpongeBob needs to write an essay, but the dude just cannot focus. He just cannot get any work done. Gee, this is harder than I thought. <laughs> Come on, SpongeBob! It should be against the law to have to write an essay on such a super sailorific sunshiny day. Now this episode has two really funny mistakes. Now the first one has to do with SpongeBob's face. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Pants! You get back here this instant! Pants! Um, where is SpongeBob's mouth? It's just missing. I think he needs his mouth. Now the other isn't as bad, but let's see if you can catch this one. It has to do with SpongeBob's pants, more specifically his belt. Uh, I'm joking. Water. <laughs> One. Yeah, like I said, not that big of a deal, but Spongebob's belt is supposed to be all black, but one of the parts of his belt is white. Not that big of a deal, but still a mistake. In the season one episode, Sandy's Rocket, Patrick makes a major mistake. When him and Spongebob sneak into Sandy's Rocket, and Patrick accidentally starts the engine, thus sending them into space. Well, it turns out they never actually even went to space. They just crashed back into Bikini Bottom and begin capturing Bikini Bottomites thinking that they're aliens. Eventually, Spongebob starts believing that his best friend Patrick could also be an alien. It's really funny, but let's head back over to this scene for the mistake. When Sandy is showing Spongebob how the net gun works, she blows on the bubbles coming out of the gun. But this, again, wouldn't be possible due to her wearing her air helmet. So she wouldn't be able to like, you know, she wouldn't be able to blow on the bubbles. So another mistake. Here's a clip. Oh, hush, silly. This is for harvesting moon rocks. Well, when you're done playing with rocks, you can use that for some serious alien hunting. Aliens? Are you not? In the episode, Copy Bob Ditto Pants, Plankton comes up with a new scheme. He makes an identical clone of SpongeBob, of course, to steal the Krabby Patty secret formula. But this doesn't go very well when SpongeBob, being the friendly sponge that he is, befriends the clone, thus ruining Plankton's scheme without even trying. Now, there are a few mistakes in this episode, but the worst one takes place during this scene and has to do with Plankton's computer wife, Karen. It's easy to miss, but the location of Karen's wheels actually change throughout the episode. In some shots, they are beneath the lower platform, while in other shots, they also appear outside the lower platform. Not a big deal, but it's a weird inconsistency I noticed. Here's a clip. More fruit punch, SpongeBob? You know, Plankton, when you invited me over, I thought it was another trick to get the Krabby Patty formula. Now I see. You just love social gatherings in the workplace. <laughs> no, no, Sponge Copy. We don't put dirty, nasty things in our mouth. Spit it out. Yeah!
Our next mistake can be found in another extremely new episode from Season 13, titled Patrick the Mailman. This episode is simple. Patrick accidentally crushes the mailman, so he and Spongebob have to take matters into their own hands and decide to deliver the mail around Bikini Bottom themselves. This episode has a great plot and is really funny, so I recommend going and watching it when you get a chance. But there is a mistake that I know you'll miss. Squidward's house is directly to the left of Spongebob's house, right? It's been like that since the very first season. Well, why is it missing during this scene of Patrick the Mailman? Yeah, talk about an obvious mistake, it should be right beside Spongebob's house. We can't even see Patrick's house either, so again, another very obvious mistake. Here's a clip. You know where this spongy boom sperm lives? Never heard of him. Oh well, return to sender. Hey, what's with the new threads? I'm a mailman now! <laughs> wow! I've always wanted to be a mailman. It's like getting to be Santa every day. In the episode Arg, SpongeBob, Patrick, and Mr. Krabs play a board game based on the legend of the Flying Dutchman, which involves an in-game treasure hunt. Well, Mr. Krabs takes things a little too seriously and decides to go on a real treasure hunt. And during the expedition, SpongeBob and Patrick actually find the treasure, despite it not seeming to be real, but Mr. Krabs says that all of the treasure belongs to him, due to him being a cheapskate. As you can imagine, this causes some conflict, but fortunately by the end of the episode, the Flying Dutchman comes to save the day, and gives Spongebob and Patrick some golden doubloons. It's very funny. On to the mistake though. During this scene where Spongebob finds Mr. Krabs at his house, it may look as if Mr. Krabs is sitting on the chair, but like look closely and you'll notice that he's actually just floating behind it. We know this as you can see his other red leg behind the chair. Like take a look at his legs. It's a really funny mistake. Here's a clip with audio. The episode Pearl Wants to Be a Star is a great episode that's all about Pearl. Our favorite little whale wants to go onto the Patrick Star Show and do a little performance for everybody, but no matter how hard she tries, something always messes it up. As the title suggests, Pearl just wants to be a star, so she keeps on trying and fortunately by the end of the episode, she finally puts on an incredible show. Now I love episodes that focus on characters other than Spongebob, Squidward, Patrick, and Sandy, so I really enjoyed this one. What I didn't really enjoy though was this mistake. During one of Pearl's performances, as she turns, she loses her entire pupil, and boy does it look really weird, it actually looks kinda creepy. Yeah, here's a clip. And last but not least, our final mistake can be found in the very first episode of Season 8. Accidents will happen, in this episode, Squidward has a nasty fall and gets himself injured at work. But this results in Mr. Krabs becoming incredibly paranoid that Squidward is going to sue him. So he starts treating Squidward very different. He starts acting nice and treating Squidward like an actual human being and not just a cashier like he normally does. Now during this scene, where Squidward is seen with the Krabby Patty, the Krusty Krab menu is incorrectly spelt as G-A-L-L-Y grub, when it's actually supposed to be spelled as G-A-L-L-E-Y grub. Also, when the camera returns to Squidward's face and body, both the menu and order here signs are just gone. They've disappeared. I was at the register, giving it a nice shining between orders, when something oh. caught my eye. A patty bun with 10 seeds instead of 11.
Wasn't about to stand idly by and allow a customer to go without all his guaranteed nutrients and vitamins. First up is the episode Welcome to Binary Bottom. Now this episode is pretty good. It isn't the best episode, but it has a lot of really funny moments. Take a look at the plot. Imagine if you will, the town of Bikini Bottom. Now imagine if everyone who lived there was a robot. Submitted for your approval. A trip to binary bottom. I'm back, back, ready. Morning, SpongeBob. Time for work, SpongeBob. Time for work, SpongeBob. Time for work, SpongeBob. Power down and leave me alone, SpongeBob. I've still got 15 minutes. You're fired. 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 Oh, thank you, Bado. I got stuck in the firing mode. How to be fired. <laughs> Damn, Binary Bottom is actually kind of cool. It seems that all of our favorite SpongeBob characters are robots in this world. It's cool. Hey, even Karen, who's normally a computer, is a human in this, which is interesting. But this episode gets pretty hectic once this happens. Take a look. Load up, SpongeBob. Give me two batteries on a barge and make them cry. <laughs> Dude, Robo Sandy is actually pretty scary, and she turns out to be the main antagonist of this episode. Take a look at this clip, but this is where we can find our first mistake. Let's see if you guys can spot it. Amazing! Flash photography is forbidden in the presence of... This one happens really fast, but watch closely as this dude loses his mouth for about a single frame. It looks really rough. And I have another mistake in this episode. <laughs> Now this one is just funny. So as we see Robo Sandy rise from the water, look, we can see Mrs. Puff is attached to her leg. Poor Mrs. Puff. But literally, and I mean literally the next shot, and Mrs. Puff is also on the shore. So it's like, what? Talk about a massive mistake. And stay tuned guys, because I've got some crazier ones coming up in this The Title Zone special. Oh boy, this next episode really packs a punch, probably because it's all about karate. Here, take a look at the plot. It's a really good one. Who is this intruder that fails to attack me? That's my friend, SpongeBob SquarePants. Whoa. Do you know karate? He doesn't just know karate, he is karate. Fuzzy's here to test me for the highest belt in karate. But Sandy, you already have a black belt. Yes, but there's one even higher than that, the blacker belt. Gee, if you want a belt, you must earn it. Okay. But how can anyone ever truly know whether he or she is worthy? It is simple. I conduct a series of tests, and if you pass, I will give you a belt that shows you know karate. Like I said, the episode has a really cool plot, with SpongeBob training to get his karate belts, and he does in the end. But at the same time, there's also a mistake. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Yeah! Fry, sir. Ketchup? Oops. Oh. Got it. Oh. Fuzzy. Sensei Fuzzy, are you okay? I was wrong about you, SpongeBob. You are now a karate master. Here. For me? You are terrible. Oh, God. Sandy, what's wrong with Fuzzy? I know what he needs. This one is really bad, but as you can see, Sandy's entire body like duplicates for a frame. And no, this isn't like an animation technique. This was a straight up mistake. And here's another one. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Boy, I can't wait to show Sandy my new karate move. Ah! Oh, Sandy! Oh! 
Sandy's in trouble. Don't worry, Sandy. I'm coming to save ya. Yeah, yeah, this one admittedly isn't as bad, but, um, why is SpongeBob's teeth yellow? A fairly common SpongeBob error, but it's still a mistake and it's still worth mentioning, and the one coming up in this next episode is crazy! Gary the Snail is a very cute and, honestly, harmless pet, right? Well, that's what I thought until I seen the episode once bitten. Take a look at this. Hey, SpongeBob. Keep your shell vermin off of my property! You leave me no choice but to call snail control! That little monster! <laughs> he bit me! Gary! No, dirty boy, this isn't like you! You mean your pet hasn't been vaccinated for mad snail disease? The bite from that infected snail will turn you into a zombie! <laughs> Yeah, in this episode, Gary is wildin'. And this scene is where we can find our first mistake in this episode. It has to do with this old lady. I want you guys to watch these clips and see if you can spot the mistake on your own. I'm a zombie, here to die on your squishy yellow flag. Okay, so this one's pretty simple. As you can see, this nice old lady right here is wearing a purple dress. It actually looks pretty nice on her. But literally seconds later, and her dress has magically changed from purple to a green dress, thus making for some lazy continuity errors right here. Of course though, that ain't it. I have another one, take a look at these clips, and let's see if you can spot the mistake, let's go. All those people think you're a monster, but I know you're just a snail. Gary, how could you? SpongeBob's been infected by his own pet snail. Oh, the irony! Yeah, this one is very straightforward, but SpongeBob is missing his legs. You can tell by the angle that his legs just were not drawn, which was a very lazy move by the animators. Not a big deal, but pretty lazy. Our next mistake can be found in the episode, Bossy Boots, but let's just get right into it as it's kind of complicated. So during this scene, as you can see, there is this car in the background, okay? It's there. <laughs> <laughs> now, as the scene progresses and Pearl and SpongeBob leave the shot, that car that we just seen disappears. <laughs> it's a shame old man crab sold the crusty crab. Hey, lady! Do you know where we can get something to eat around here? That's it! I quit! It didn't drive away because it happens in like seconds. It seems the animators drew it, as you can see here, but then forgot to include it in the next shot, thus giving us a weird mistake. And hey, that ain't it, as during this scene, we have another mistake. So as you can see, in this picture of a sea unicorn, the sea unicorn has a horn on its head. You can see it right here. Reduces stress for only five easy payment to $9.95. Mr. Krabs, Pearl is ruining the Krusty Krabs! But for some reason, later on in the shot, the horn just disappears during this shot. Barely saving the Krusty Krab! What would we do without these beautiful $20 sea unicorn wall hangers? The animators just forgot to draw it again, thus making for another really weird mistake. Like, geez, this episode is full of mistakes, and guys, I've got some crazier ones coming up, so stay tuned. Next up, I have two Gary the Snail themed mistakes. They're pretty bad. I have no idea how the animators missed them. Let's take a look at this first one and see if you guys can spot it. Now, Gary, we can do this the hard way or the easy way. Or the medium way. Or the semi-medium easy hard way. Or the sort of hard with a touch of awkward, easy, difficult, challenging way. So that's how you want to play it, huh? It's new toy! Fetch! Huh? New boomerang pet ball really works. Aww. 
This one is interesting, especially because it happens really fast, but as most of you guys know, this is how Gary's eyes look. They're red, they're beautiful. Gary has some beautiful eyes, but they're red, okay, as you can see right here. But for one frame in this shot, Gary's eyes are purple and they look really weird. I have no idea how the animators made this mistake because it's for one frame, but it's pretty bad. And there's more. Let's see if you guys can catch it. So if I can't get you to come to the bath, I'll just have to bring the bath to you. Gary. Bath delivery. This one is a lot less complex. Pretty much, normally Gary's eyelids look like this. They're like the same color as the stems of his eyes. They're like blue or purplish. But in the episode Gary takes a bath, there's one scene where his eyelids are pink, which is a massive mistake that's not right. So yeah, another mistake. Gary. Bath delivery. When it comes to his job at the Krusty Krab, Squidward is pretty darn lazy. I mean, not only does he often hate being there, but he's also always looking for ways to slack off and falling asleep. Well, that is, until the episode Employee of the Month. In this episode, Spongebob gets his 26th consecutive Employee of the Month award, and wants to get his 27th, but this results in a very competitive rivalry between him and Squidward, with them both resorting to some cheap tactics to get the win. Heck, at one point, Squidward traps Spongebob in a damn cage. But anyways, on to the mistake. During this scene, where Spongebob and Squidward are racing to the Krusty Krab, there is a mistake with the door. Okay, this one's a little complicated, but normally the handles of the Krusty Krab door look like this. They're golden or brown, the handle, the part you grab to open the door. However, seconds later, when they go into the restaurant, the handles are now clear and look nothing like they're supposed to look like. So yeah, definitely a mistake here. To be fair, it's season one, but definitely a mistake. Here's a clip. Money, money, gonna make some money. Plankton is a bit of a miserable person to be around. I mean, he's always trying to pull off some sort of scheme, and honestly, I don't blame a lot of other Bikini Bottomites for hating the guy. To be fair though, he does have to put up with a lot of BS. I mean, his wife is a computer, so I do have some sympathy for Plankton, and it seems I'm not the only one as this is what the episode fun is all about. In this episode, Spongebob makes an effort to become Plankton's friend. But of course, due to Plankton's urge and addiction to steal the secret formula, this friendship doesn't last very long. Now the mistake in question can be found during this scene. It's a little hard to make out in video, but take a look at this image. For about a frame in this episode, Spongebob's belt is not only on top of his shirt, but it's also white when it's supposed to be black. I'm gonna show a video version in the video, it's a little blurry, but as you can see in this image, it's definitely white. Here's a clip. Tartar sauce. Our first mistake can be found in the very new season 13 episode, Say Ah. This episode only came out a few days ago, so it's completely new. But yeah, in this episode, Plankton notices that instead of fearing him, most Bikini Bottomites just think that he's cute and harmless. And as you can imagine, this really gets on Plankton's nerves. Now the mistake in question has to do with both the Chum Bucket and the Krusty Krab. As most of you know, the Chum Bucket and Krusty Krab are directly across from one another, and there is also a path running between them. 
Now, earlier in this episode, we get a clear shot of this path right here. As you can see, it's there. But for some reason during this scene later on, the locations have completely changed, with the Krusty Krab not being directly in front of the Chum Bucket and being much farther than it's supposed to be. There's like an entire path in between them now, but yeah, definitely a mistake. Here's a clip. In the episode Pre-Hibernation Week, Sandy prepares for hibernation, and Spongebob happily agrees to play some sports with her to have one last little fun play session before she goes in for her long sleep. They're not going to be able to hang out for a while. Spongebob soon regrets it though as Sandy puts Spongebob in all sorts of dangerous situations. And from here, the episode focuses on a stressed out Spongebob, hiding from Sandy to avoid playing more dangerous sports with her. It isn't necessarily my favorite episode, but I love the scenes of Sandy and Spongebob competing with each other. What I don't love so much though, is this mistake. During the scene where Sandy is getting mad at Bikini Bottomites, there is a brief shot where her neck is incorrectly colored as white, when it should be brown. Here's a clip. Man the light bolts! Alpha team, you search uptown! Gold team searches downtown! Any questions? Gold team rules! Sides, he's yellow! Yeah, uh, here he is! Hey, can I go home now? Oh, look! He's up in the sky! Well, he's not... They must have gone to search some more. In the episode Rock Bottom, Patrick and SpongeBob end up taking the wrong bus after spending an awesome day full of fun at the glove themed amusement park known as Glove World, their favorite place. But once they leave, they end up in the abysmal zone of Rock Bottom. This place is the definition of weird or creepy, and while Spongebob does escape the place by the end of the episode, he is trapped in the creepy location for a majority of the episode. Now, this one is a classic, and is probably one of my favorite Spongebob episodes ever, but it does have a mistake, as you can guess. When we first see Spongebob and Patrick get scared, for a single frame, one of Spongebob's pupils is missing as he blinks. Pretty weird. Here's a clip. Uh, that's an easy one, Patrick. Uh, just wait for someone to come out and then you'll know. The episode Reef Blower is not only very short, but it's also a silent episode with no dialogue. This is the second episode of the show to air ever, and it's interesting to imagine if all episodes of the show were like this one. But anyways, let's talk about the mistake. It isn't that big of a deal, I guess, considering this is literally the second episode of the show ever, but during this scene, Squidward is shown sitting on a doorstep in front of his house. However, this doorstep doesn't actually exist, it doesn't show up in any other scenes during this episode, or any other episodes after. It just doesn't really exist except for this one shot. I guess this isn't necessarily a mistake because it's from an early episode before locations were fully established, but it's definitely weird. And the fact that it doesn't appear at all in any other scenes is kind of a mistake. So yeah, here's a clip. <laughs> When Mr. Krabs finds a hole in the Krusty Krab in the episode The drive through he comes up with a very good idea from a business perspective. He turns the hole into a drive through 
thus offering customers a new drive through option at the Krusty Krab. As you can imagine though, like most of Mr. Krabs' changes to the Krusty Krab, this doesn't go very well, when both SpongeBob and Squidward struggle to keep up with all of the drive through orders. Well, during this scene, there's a mistake, as when SpongeBob is seen carrying a good 15 orders out to customers, there's something going on with his leg as it's incorrectly colored as white for about a fraction of a second. It isn't that big of a deal, but it looks pretty weird. When a nasty storm hits Bikini Bottom and pretty much traps SpongeBob Squidward and Mr. Krabs and the Krusty Krab in the episode Pull Up a Barrel, Mr. Krabs decides to tell some Navy Day stories to help pass the time. As you can imagine, Squidward and SpongeBob aren't very interested, but Mr. Krabs' story follows a young Mr. Krabs, and is fairly entertaining, so rather than spoil it, let's just talk about a sneaky mistake. In this episode, every SpongeBob character has their own counterpart, and if you look at Sandy's, she isn't wearing an air helmet. As you guys know, Sandy is like a squirrel, a real animal, she isn't a sea creature, so she would be drowning right now because she's not wearing the air helmet, so definitely a mistake, a weird one too. Here's a clip. Join me, Krabs! We'll rule the seven seas together! I can't let you go, lass. I'd be in violation of the naval code. Enjoy your last meal. I hope you like sponge sugar. Oh. <laughs> and last but not least, our final writing error comes from the season 11 episode titled Squid Noir. In this episode, Squidward loses his clarinet, which causes Squidward to go on a detective-style mission to find it. It's pretty cool. After questioning almost everyone in Bikini Bottom, Squidward eventually finds his clarinet lost in jellyfish fields, and he happily retrieves it. Now, from here, the episode ends with Squidward playing his clarinet, and it not only attracts, but also pleases and makes Jellyfish happy. However, if we head back to Season 2's Jellyfish Jam, we learned that Jellyfish hate Squidward's clarinet playing, and will actively attack him if he plays, so yeah, I guess the writer of this episode hasn't watched Season 2, go watch Season 2. I'm going to show a clip with audio, but before I do, you guys know the drill, shout out to the Grapple Gang Baby. Thank you so much for watching the video guys, and if you're at the premiere, shout out to you even more, say something in chat. By the way, if you're new to the channel though, and you want me to respond to your comment, make sure to subscribe, as I'll be responding to the comments of all subscribers on this video, only if you're subscribed though. YouTube will show me if you're subscribed, so yeah. Anyways though, here's those clips. I'm Cartoon Cory, and I'll see you guys again soon. I love you guys. Peace. Squidward, yeah! Yeah, Squidward! And that's how it ended. Clarinet returned, case closed. Another mystery solved by Squidward Tentacles, Jazz Detective. Oh, come on. Just fall back. Trust me, I'll catch you. <laughs> I've said this before, but SpongeBob Season 4 is very underrated. You know, it's when Steven Hillenburg, like, kind of left the series, so some episodes are a little meh, but there's also really good episodes. And the episode New Leaf, in my opinion, is one of those episodes where Plankton pretends to turn a new leaf and not be evil anymore. Take a look at some of these scenes showing the episode's plot, and then we'll get right into the mistakes. What about all those fevered attempts at trying to steal my Krabby Patty recipe? Exactly! They've all been just attempts! And every single one! A miserable failure! Glad you could make it, buddy! So, what's this about, Krabs? 
I thought that since we're no longer arch enemies, maybe, maybe we can start over. You know, it's funny because Mr. Krabs could tell that Plankton was capping. He just knew. Anyways, though, it's mistake time. Here's the first one. <laughs> I never give you the formula. <laughs> so as you guys just seen, at one point, Plankton opens this gotcha letter from Mr. Krabs. All right, Mr. Krabs pranked him. And then Mr. Krabs bursts through the door of the chum buckets. Now, the problem here is that the door is randomly transparent with like rectangular knobs when in every other shot, it's with round windows. So I highly doubt that Plankton did some like interior designing to his restaurant. Totally a mistake. And here's another one from New Leaf. This one happens really quick, but near the ending when Plankton gets the formula and laughs like a crazy person, his mouth actually just disappears for a frame. Like, look at this mouthless Plankton right here. My dude is just missing his mouth because the animators didn't draw it for a frame.